as of this evening's Girls Division IV District Final Doubleheader. Just moments ago, it was the Waterford Lady Wildcats defeating the new Boston Glenwood Lady Tigers 55-22. to Waterford will now await the winner of our upcoming game between the Notre Dame Lady Titans and the Peebles Lady Indians. Notre Dame is coached by J.D. McKenzie. The Lady Titans enter this contest with an overall record of 24-0. Notre Dame finished Southern Ohio Conference Division I play perfect at 14-0, accumulating the school's fourth straight SOC1 title. Notre Dame has enjoyed eight consecutive sectional championships, and for the third year in a row, the Lady Titans will be competing in a district final. The leading scorers for Notre Dame include Katie Detweiler, who averages just shy of 15 points per game. Lexi Smith pours in 14 points per contest. Ava Hassel is good for just over 10 points per game, and Taylor Schmidt averages 9 points per contest. Detweiler and Smith lead the Lady Titans in the rebounding category as they combine for 19 boards per game, Detweiler with 10 and Smith with 9. The Notre Dame Lady Titans also like to move the ball around. Molly Hoover averages 5.5 assists per game. Hassel averages 4 assists per game. And Taylor Schmidt averages just shy of 3 assists per game. Defensively for Notre Dame, Katie Detweiler averages 5 blocks per outing. Taylor Schmidt averages 4 steals per game. Ava Hassel can be a ball hawk as well. She averages 3.5 steals per game. And Molly Hoover averages 3 steals per contest. The leading three-point shooters include Allie Smith, Ava Hassel, and Taylor Schmidt. Smith and Hassel have both made over 20 trays on the season. Schmidt has 13. When it comes to field goal shooting percentage, Katie Detweiler is pretty tough to beat. The 6'4 junior shoots 77% from the floor. Lexi Smith, the 6-footer, shoots 56% from the field. And Notre Dame can score points, averaging 64 points per contest. The Lady Titans play defense as well, holding their opposition to just 31 points per game. Again, Notre Dame enters this contest 24-0. Mark, it has been a great season for the Lady Titans. Well, there's no question about that. When you get to this stage of the year and you have a zero in the right side of the column, uh, that's going to get people's attention. They finished up the final poll, number three. Of course, we just witnessed the number one team in the final poll, Waterford. And, boy, if we, that can end up being the matchup. And that's what Notre Dame is going to be gunning for tonight. What a great matchup I think that will be. You were looking at talking about those numbers there a moment ago. I was digging up the research and looking at the information on these two teams. I mean, you look at Smith and Detweiler, those are almost like video game type yeah. numbers. Yeah, they have really been solid all season long. And, you know, Coach J.D. McKenzie has been so great about calling us during the Saturday morning sports line all season long. As good as things have gone for Notre Dame this year, He's always looking at something that the team can improve sure. upon. He always seems to be pushing this squad very, very hard. And we saw that, I think, from uh, Jerry Close in the Waterford game, that even though you know, it was pretty er- evident early on in that game, they were not going to lose that ball game. There were still some things that occurred that, you know, sometimes you might look at that as the casual basketball fan and say, eh, why are you getting upset about that for? You're going to win the ball game, But, <laughs> it's you know, that's not the way – he, Jerry Close, is, that's not the way J.D. McKenzie is, too. He wants his teams as sharp as they can be heading into play because you don't want to take anybody lightly, especially when you get uh, to this stage of the season. And this Peebles Ball Club coming in at 17-6, and six, they are a very physical team. And no doubt they'll want to try to challenge Smith and Detweiler down in the low post tonight. Peebles will be a very formidable foe. There is no doubt about it. The Lady Indians defeated Western 60-41 to to win a sectional title and then defeated Federal Hawking in the district semifinal 54-44. to This people's program has won 18 sectional titles but has struggled at the district tournament level. Prior to defeating Federal Hawking back on February 24th, Peebles had not won a district tournament game since 1998. This season marks Peebles' first district tournament Since 2014, the Lady Indians participated in the district tournament every year from 2011 through 2014. So you've got a group of Lady Indians that have not been here before, whereas, as we mentioned a few moments ago, Notre Dame is competing in a district final for the third straight year. As for the path that Notre Dame has taken to get to tonight's game, the Lady Titans got a first-round bye and played Valley in a sectional final. Notre Dame won that contest 57-27 to back on February 15th. Last week, February 24th, Notre Dame prevailed in a district semifinal. 
44 to 32 over Eastern. And that sets up tonight's contest between top seeded Notre Dame and number three seed Peebles with the winner taking on Waterford next Thursday right here at Jackson High School in a regional semifinal game. Should be a good one. We appreciate all of our area sponsors for making this broadcast possible, especially Dan Casty at the Barrett Murphy Insurance Agency, Chuck and Amy Detweiler at the area Scioto County Subway Restaurants, the Glockner family of dealerships, and Sherman Cricker Insurance. You are tuned in to the SOMC Sports Motion pregame show. SOMC Sports Motion is a premier sports medicine program offering a unique multidisciplinary approach to your health issues. At SOMC Sports Motion, they offer a scientific approach to the full continuum of care from prevention and performance improvement all the way through an injury treatment as well as rehabilitation. The Notre Dame Lady Titans will face off against the Peebles Lady Indians tonight from Jackson High School in a girls Division IV district final. Stay with us when we return. We'll hear from the head coach of the Lady Titans, J.D. McKenzie. It's Larry Moore Sporting Goods Game Night Girls Tournament Style, and you're listening to Tournament Hoops on Fox Sportsman AM 1260 WNXT. This special presentation of a Girls Division IV District Final Doubleheader from Jackson High School is being presented in part by Dan Cassidy at the Barrett Murphy Insurance Agency, by Chuck and Jamie Detweiler's Area Subway Restaurants, by the Glockner Family of Dealerships, and by Sherman Cricker Insurance. Congratulations to both the new Boston Lady Tigers and the Notre Dame Lady Titans on their 2018 sectional championships. Monroe's Collision wants you to know you have the right to choose. And like many others have, choose Monroe's Collision. Their technicians repair your vehicle to factory specifications using the highest quality parts, materials, and equipment and taking pride in restoring your vehicle to pre-accident condition. Choose Monroe's Collision where they handle all aspects of your claim. Monroe's Frame and Collision, our work says it all. 10th and Waller Street, Portsmouth, Jackson, Chillicothe, West Union, and Ashland, Kentucky. Steve O'Rourke at Scioto Valley Heating and Cooling would like to commend the efforts of all the players, coaches, and fans involved in this game. With over 30 years in the heating and cooling business, Scioto Valley Heating and Cooling services all brands. Steve O'Rourke brings you the award-winning Scioto Valley Heating and Cooling Cool Play of the Game. Steve O'Rourke, Scioto Valley Heating and Cooling and Carrier. Names you can trust. Visit online at SciotoValleyHeating.com. Archie Griffin and Jim Lachey talk about going the distance for motorists insurance. When you need insurance, you want someone who's there to go the distance with you. Independent Motors agents are hometown neighbors in the game every day. Backed for more than 80 years by Motors' heritage of quality, integrity, and unparalleled service. Motors Insurance for auto, home, business, and life. You know us. Contact Dan Cassidy at the Bent Murphy Insurance Agency, 1031 Gallia Street, Portsmouth, Ohio, 353-3121. Serving Southern Ohio since 1922. This special presentation of a girls' Division IV district final doubleheader from Jackson High School is being presented in part by Dan Cassidy at the Barrett Murphy Insurance Agency, by Chuck and Jamie Detweiler's Area Subway Restaurants, by the Glockner Family of Dealerships, and by Sherman Cricker Insurance. Congratulations to both the new Boston Lady Tigers and the Notre Dame Lady Titans on their 2018 sectional championships. Gamps Corner and John Deere Route 140 in Slocum salute all of our area athletes and their personal as well as their team endeavors. Hard work and dedication is what the area's number one dealer of John Deere, tractors, and mowers is all about. They open the doors early, 7.30 in the morning, and they don't stop until their last customer is served. No matter what your school colors, Gamps Corner proudly wears the green and yellow and join the winning tradition of our area high school athletes. Remember, nothing runs like a deer or helps support our local youth of our community like John Deere and Gamps Corner, 140 in Slocum. Welcome back to tonight's Girls Division IV District Final Doubleheader from Jackson High School. I'm Chuck Greenslade along with Mark Williams, and this is the SOMC Sports Motion pregame show. Game number two on the evening will pit the Notre Dame Lady Titans against the Peebles Lady Indians. And with us to talk more about it is the head coach, of the 24-0 Southern Ohio Conference Division I champion, Notre Dame Lady Titans, J.D. McKenzie. Coach McKenzie, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. No problem. Glad to be here. It is a big, big night for you and your Lady Titans. 
A district championship is on the line. What a season you have had. Before we actually get into talking about this evening's opposition, for folks who might not be overly familiar with your program, let's talk about some of your players. Looking at your leading scores, Katie Detweiler averaging 15 a game, Lexi Smith 14 a game, Ava Hassel just over 10 points per game, and Taylor Schmidt 9 points per game. What is it about your ball club that makes this offense go? Uh, I think the girls being so unselfish with the basketball and offensively us trying to find the shot that we want each possession, um, you know, not forcing bad shots or, and things like that, and, and finding the open player. Um, you know, we've just did a great job all year of being super balanced offensively. And like I said earlier about being unselfish, I mean, we, we passed the ball down the floor well and tried to find the open person and the person um, who's got the best position at the time. And, you know, when you do that, you're going to shoot high percentage shots, and, and we've done that most of the year. You've got three players on your roster that average three assists per game or more. Molly Hoover leads you in that category with five and a half per game. That totally justifies exactly what you just said there and reiterates how unselfish your ball team is. And defensively, you've got some thieves on your squad. Taylor Schmidt averaging four steals per game, Ava Hassel 3.5, and Molly Hoover three steals per game. So let's talk about the defensive end. Well, all year long, you know, the, the guards have done a tremendous job of, uh, you know, pressuring the opponent and, um, you know, being aggressive. And, you know, we do a lot of if we're full court pressing and, you know, say the team starts to break our press a little bit, we've done a great job of coming from behind and tipping the ball, um, things like that. And, you know, the guards can be so aggressive because of our two big girls inside, Katie and Lexi. Um, because they block so many shots and change so many shots. So, you know, the guards, you know, do have a lot to do um, with all those steals, but they feel confident in being aggressive because they know they got help behind them in the two big girls. But, you know, they've got a lot of speed, um, you know, and they're just tenacious on the defensive end. And we, we've been like that all year, and hopefully it continues going on. Detweiler averages just over five blocks per game. She is six foot four. Smith is six feet tall, and they certainly give you somewhat of a twin tower presence down low. Between the two of them, they average 19 rebounds per game, Detweiler with 10 and Smith with 9. If the ball does come off the iron, it has to give you quite a peace of mind in knowing that those two are there to typically get the board. Yeah, we feel pretty confident with them. Um, you know, our rebounding uh, numbers compared to last year went down a little bit, but our shooting percentage has went up this year so I think that has a little bit to do with you know the lower rebounding numbers but uh, you know and throughout the season Katie and Lexi and the other girls who, who started a the game they didn't play in a lot of fourth quarters so you know numbers are a little bit lower this year but you know they've done a great job of uh, controlling the paint being anchors down there defensively and, and like you said clearing the glass and ending the defensive possession with the rebound and then you know, something that's not going to show up in the stat book is they've done a great job of outletting the ball to our point guard or, you know, our, our guards running um, transition lanes and getting the ball where it needs to be. And then, you know, they've both done a great job. If they weren't the one that got the rebound, sprinting the floor and going down and getting an offensive position so we get a high-quality shot out of transition. So there's a lot that goes into it. But, you know, without those two big girls, you know, we'd be a totally different team and would have to – change what we do a little bit but you know it's nice to have that kind of size in there and, and you know on both ends of the floor they do a really nice job for us you had a pep rally at notre dame high school earlier in the day how did that go it went well we had uh you know a lot of people from the community there and, and the students and everything like that everybody's excited and you know to be the first team to go undefeated in school history is big for them <clears throat> um, and be able to try to win our first district championship tonight. Everybody's excited. Kids are excited. And, you know, we've had great crowds all year long. And, you know, our last game at Jackson, we had a huge crowd. And, you know, hope to have that again tonight, even though it's a late game. But we've got a pet bus going up and um, hope to fill the stands. But, you know, we're just excited to be able to represent Notre Dame in, in, in a positive light and, and, and try to keep –
Thursday. Now that's a day. Thursday is awesome. Thursday is the bomb. Why is Thursday so awesome? Well, because it's Boneless Thursdays at Buffalo Wild Wings. Every Thursday, you can get specially priced boneless wings spun fresh in your choice of any of their over 20 sauces and seasonings. So hurry up and get to your local Buffalo Wild Wings this Thursday. You'll know it's Thursday by how awesome it feels. Or you can just look at a calendar. Whatever works. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings. Sports. Stop. Don't pay your insurance until you compare your rates with one of the friendly insurance professionals at the Sherman Cricker Insurance Agency, your independent insurance agency at 820 Tillicothe Street. Sherman Cricker has saved your neighbors hundreds of dollars, and maybe they can do the same for you. So before you renew your present insurance coverage, stop. Let them compare rates at Sherman Cricker Insurance Agency, 820 Tillicothe Street, downtown Portsmouth. Phone 354-4444. The Sherman Cricker Insurance Agency. This is Gary Duzan a Portsmouth Insurance, a TAH Benefits partner. And this is Jay Hazelbaker, president of TAH Benefits. Jay, health care reform has made health insurance more complicated today. You're right, Gary, but that doesn't mean the relationship with your agent needs to be. Portsmouth Insurance understands the health insurance marketplace, and our commitment to knowing the industry and services for both personal and business insurance gives you peace of mind. For assistance with all of your employee benefits... Welcome back to tonight's Girls Division... This is Gary Duzan a Portsmouth Insurance, a TAH Benefits partner. And this is Jay Hazelbaker, president of TAH Benefits. Jay, health care reform has made health insurance more complicated today. You're right, Gary, but that doesn't mean the relationship with your agent needs to be. Portsmouth Insurance understands the health insurance marketplace, and our commitment to knowing the industry and services for both personal and business insurance gives you peace of mind. For assistance with all of your employee benefits needs, call us at Portsmouth Insurance, 353-4105. That's 353-4105. This broadcast this is Gary Duzan. Back at it and say, man, one play, one possession, and, and we win the game. We go on the regionals. Um, but I think that's made this year's team hungrier, and you know that's something we kind of lean on as the past experience. Uh, you know, and, and how bad it feels to watch the other team cut down the net and to take home silver medals instead of gold. And I know this team's hungry, and I know they want to bring home a district championship. And hopefully that experience is something we can lean on if we need to, um, of being there before. I, I know last year in the second half we were down 10 points at one time, you know, and came roaring back to take the lead. So, you know, things aren't going good. Hopefully we don't, you know, get nervous or, or start panicking and we can lean on past experiences and, you know, regroup and get things going. But more than anything, I hope it helps us get off to a strong start where we don't have the nerves that maybe people might have. Uh, with the inexperience of being playing at that level. But, um, you know, we'll have to see what unfolds tonight. I'm sure you've scouted Peebles very, very closely. What can you tell me about this team? Uh, they're they're solid. I mean, they're solid in a lot of places. They, they shoot the ball extremely well. Um, you know, they've got some athletic long girls. Uh, you know, they can run the floor well. They get after it defensively. Um, you know, they look like a team that's, hungry and, and, you know, as excited to be there as we are, we're, we're hoping our maturity and our size and our defensive tenacity are kind of the things that change the complexion of the game. But, um, you know, at this point in, in the tournament, there's nobody there that doesn't deserve to be there or, um, you know, is not a quality team. Um, they do a lot of good things, especially on the offensive end, man. They, they've got – uh, I think three girls that have made over 33s this year and another girl that's in the high 20s. And um, they've got some girls that shoot a high percentage from the three. They knock down free throws. Um, we're expecting to see zone defense from them tonight, and they do a nice job in it. And hopefully we're patient with it and move the ball around, stretch the zone out a little bit, and get the shot that we're looking for. Coach McKenzie, I recently heard that your SOC1 champion, Lady Titans, took the time to scrimmage the SOC2 champion, Minford Lady Falcons. What did your team learn from that experience? I, I, you know, it was great. Um, you know, me and Scott had tried to get together the week before and due to weather and makeup games and stuff like that, he wasn't able to do it because we were done with our season at that point. But, you know, we can't go scrimmage anybody in a close distance, you know, feasible distance as good as Minford. Um, you know, and it's nice because they got very good guards. Um, they got a good inside presence. They're aggressive, and, and 
I mean, I think it helped both teams tremendously. Um, you know, it, it was a lot of fun, and, you know, it's something that you wish you could have uh, sold tickets to and had everybody in the county come watch because it was an absolute battle and it was a lot of fun. But, you know, we, we did that, and we've been having some uh, former college players come in and, and, you know, scrimmage against us a little bit. So we've been doing things to uh, mimic what we're going to see and try to use a high-level quality player um, to mimic those positions. But, uh, yeah, the Memphis thing was great, and uh, it, I think it was great for both teams, and it, it was a lot of fun. Ironically, both teams will have an opportunity to win district championships. Menford will get that opportunity Saturday against Southeastern Ross in Division Three, while your Lady Titans will have that opportunity here very, very shortly in Division Four against Peebles. Coach, thank you again for taking the time to speak with me. Best of luck to you and your Lady Titans tonight. All right, thank you, Chuck. All right, buddy, thank you. That is Coach J.D. McKenzie of the Notre Dame Lady Titans. His Lady Titans will hoop it up against Peebles. This is the SOMC Sports Motion pregame show on Fox Sportsmith AM 1260 and on WNXT Sports using the TuneIn Radio app on your smartphone. Oh, hey, Dad. Grab your stuff. We're going to Wendy's. I need to share something with you. Okay. Wendy's Taco Salad, fresh chopped lettuce topped with chili, cheese, and salsa. Served with tortilla chips and memories. Sweetie, I know you can't remember living through the 90s, but you're about to know what it tasted like. I know all about the 90s. I love classic rock. Uh, boy bands are not classic rock. Wendy's Taco Salad. Try it again for the first time. Stop it. Don't pay your insurance until you compare your rates with one of the friendly insurance professionals at the Sherman Cricker Insurance Agency, your independent insurance agency at 820 Chillicothe Street. Sherman Cricker has saved your neighbors hundreds of dollars, and maybe they can do the same for you. So before you renew your present insurance coverage, stop. Let them compare rates at Sherman Cricker Insurance Agency, 820 Chillicothe Street, downtown Portsmouth. Phone 354-4444. The Sherman Cricker Insurance Agency. Hometown Broadcasting of Portsmouth Radio Stations presents Larry Moore Sporting Goods Game Night. Featuring Scioto County Area High School Sports Broadcasts. Stay tuned for live coverage from our game site with Larry Moore Sporting Goods Game Night on this Hometown Broadcasting of Portsmouth Station. Welcome back to the SOMC Sports Motion pregame show, coming to you from Jackson High School, where the Notre Dame Lady Titans are getting set to take on the People's Lady Indians in this girls' Division IV district championship game. The winner moves on to face Waterford, which just defeated New Boston a little earlier in the evening here in Jackson by the final of 55-22. to Checking some other final scores. In Boys Division II District semifinal action from the Convocation Center on the campus of Ohio University in Athens earlier in the evening, Fairland defeated Denton County 64-45. And in women's college basketball earlier today, the Shawnee State University women's basketball team knocked off Life University 111-49 in round one of the Mid-South Conference Tournament, which is being held this year at the University of Pikeville. The SSU men will play their opening round matchup in the MSC Tournament against host U Pike tomorrow morning. That game will tip at 10 a.m. It's time to meet the Valerie Ford starting lineups, a service of Valerie Ford on US 23 in Waverly. Get into your new Ford today at Valerie Ford, where they're laughing at big city prices. The first five on the floor for Coach J.D. McKenzie's 24-0 Notre Dame Lady Titans will be Molly Hoover, a 5'5 senior who averages 5.5 assists per game. Taylor Schmidt, a 5'4 sophomore who is good for four steals per game. Ava Hassel, a 5'4 freshman who averages four assists and three steals per game. Lexi Smith, a six-foot-tall senior who averages 14 points and nine rebounds per outing. And Katie Detweiler, a six-foot-four junior, she is the Lady Titans' leading scorer and rebounder. She averages 
15 points per game, shoots 77% from the field, averages 10 rebounds per game, and five block shots per outing. The Peebles Lady Indians are coached by Billy Joe Justice, and they enter tonight's contest with an overall record of 17-6. and six. The projected starters for Peebles will be freshman J.C. Justice, senior McKinley Ryan, sophomore Christian Reed, senior Madison Nichols, and senior Bailey Justice. Those are your Valerie Ford starting lineups. This special presentation of girls' Division IV district tournament basketball is being presented on Fox Sportsman AM 1260 and on WNXT Sports using the TuneIn Radio app on your smartphone by the Barrett Murphan Insurance Agency, Subway Restaurants, the Glockner Family of Dealerships, and Sherman Cricker Insurance. You have been tuned in to the SOMC Sports Motion pregame show. At SOMC Sports Motion, their physicians and providers are actively involved in sports coverage in the community. Their sideline and team physician responsibilities include several area high schools. They stand out by tailoring their program to each school, team, individual athlete, or weekend warrior. Their goal is to get you back into motion. For more details, dial 740-356-7526. When Mark and I return, we'll introduce you to the officiating crew, which will call tonight's game and get you set for the opening tip-off between Notre Dame and Peebles. This is High School Tournament Basketball on WNXT. This is Gary Duzan of Portsmouth Insurance, a TAH Benefits partner. And this is Jay Hazelbaker, president of TAH Benefits. Jay, health care reform has made health insurance more complicated today. You're right, Gary, but that doesn't mean the relationship with your agent needs to be. Portsmouth Insurance understands the health insurance marketplace, and our commitment to knowing the industry and services for both personal and business insurance gives you peace of mind. For assistance with all of your employee benefits needs, call us at Portsmouth Insurance, 353-4105. That's 353-4105. This broadcast of high school sports is being presented in part by the Glockner family of dealerships which include the Glockner GM Superstore in Portsmouth, Glockner Honda Toyota in Portsmouth, Glockner Chevrolet GMC and Buick in Ironton, Glockner Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram of Ashland, Glockner Ford in South Point, and Glockner Auto Credit with five locations around the tri-state to conveniently serve you. Online at glockner.com. At Glockner, they make it easy. Welcome back to tonight's live coverage of Girls Tournament Basketball on Fox Sportsman AM 1260 WNXT Sportsman. I'm Chuck Greenslade along with Mark Williams and Dennis G. Camp. Tonight, the Notre Dame Lady Titans will try to improve to 25-0 and and win a district championship. But to do so, they'll have to get past the 17-6 and Peebles Lady Indians. Tip-off is drawing near. It's time to meet the officials for this evening's contest presented by King's Daughters Sportsman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Officials always try to make the right call, but when players suffer an injury, the right call is to visit orthopedic surgeons Jerry Trinidad and Jared Bentley at King's Daughters Sportsman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine located at 1729 Kenny's Lane, Suite 102 in Portsmouth. Phone 740-351-0980. A veteran crew will be donning the stripes and tooting the whistles this evening. They are Marcus Thompson, Keith Throckmorton, and Matt Oren. Those are your King's Daughter Sportsman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine officiating crew. Matt Oren getting double duty tonight. Yes, he is. is call the first game. He will get his well. exercise on this <laughs> evening at Jackson High School, no doubt about it. We are just about set for the opening tip-off, presented by Harris Floor Covering at 610 Ninth Street in Portsmouth. They are the area's leading floor covering contractor. Harris Floor Covering has everything for all your floor covering needs. Call Stephen Harris at 353-7959. Mark, there is a little bit different vibe here in the gymnasium at Jackson High School in anticipation for this nightcap of this Division IV District Final doubleheader. I think everybody that (laughs) attends Notre Dame High School or who has ever attended Notre Dame High School is at this game tonight, and they are revving the place up. They are making some noise. It might be for Peebles as well. This place is (laughs) packed, and both fan bases are bringing it. This is going to be an outstanding game, I think. The Notre Dame Lady Titans are the higher seed, therefore they are wearing their home white uniforms with blue trim and numerals trimmed in gold. The Peebles Lady Indians, the visiting team on the scoreboard, they are in their road red uniforms with white numerals and white stripes, which are trimmed in blue. It is Larry Moore Sporting Goods game night, girls tournament style. We are just about set for the opening tip-off. 
Notre Dame entering this contest as a number one seed. The Lady Titans, if you're just joining us, are 24-0. Peebles is a three seed, entering the game at 17-6. Notre Dame coached by J.D. McKenzie, while the Lady Indians are led by coach Billy Joe Justice. Battling for the opening tip-off will be Katie Detweiler of Notre Dame. She will be working against sophomore Christian Reed of the Peebles Lady Indians. It's the Harris floor covering opening tip-off. Matt Oren brings the ball to center circle. It's in the air and is going to be Detweiler easily tapping the ball into the backcourt where Molly Hoover tracks it down, and Notre Dame will have the opening possession of the game. Hoover brings the ball across the timeline, sauces cross court. Taylor Schmidt with the basketball deep on the left point. She'll pass it back to Hoover on the right wing. Hoover loses the handle momentarily but tracks the ball back down. She swings it to Schmidt left side. Into the corner. The running jumper by Hassel will not go with the rebound. It's Detweiler and her put back is in and Notre Dame strikes first. It's going to be awfully tough for Peebles to counter that inside especially if Detweiler gets the position she had right there. Notre Dame with quite a height advantage just with Detweiler alone. J.C. Justice the freshman point guard brings the ball into the front court for Peebles with the ball right side. It's Bailey Justice, the senior. She'll give it off. Left wing to Justice. Justice passes over to McKinley Ryan, a senior. Top of the key now. It's Justice. She'll drive to the right point and kick it over to Madison Nichols the first time she's had a touch in the contest. McKinley Ryan with the ball in between the circles. She'll toss it right side to Justice, who brings it out near center circle. She'll swing it over left side to Justice on the wing. Justice guarded by Schmidt. Justice drives into the lane, kicks it out to Nichols. She has the ball stolen away from her by Ava Hassel. The freshman has the Lady Titans running. She'll penetrate inside, draw the foul, and she will be visiting the free throw line for two shots as Bailey Justice commits the first foul of the contest. You know, Ava Hassel, we've heard about her a lot this year on the on the sports line. Her and Schmidt outside just as potent as what Smith and Detweiler are inside. I don't know that they get the pub that the two post players get, but uh, they've had outstanding seasons as well. Hassel only a freshman. She enters the contest averaging three steals per game. She's already got one of them. Her first free throw tickles the twine, and Notre Dame is out to an early 3-0 advantage with 6.41 remaining in the opening stanza. Second free throw in the air, and it rattles through. So Hassel makes the pair, and she's got two points in this game. Detweiler with the other two. It's 4 nothing Notre Dame. Always good to see him start off two for two at the free throw line. That was a struggle for New Boston in the, early in the ball game in the first game tonight. Missed three by McKinley Ryan. Rebound Notre Dame. Here come the Lady Titans. Schmidt pushes it, push it up the floor to Hoover. Inside to Detweiler. And Detweiler from the right block will be fouled. She'll visit the free throw line to shoot two. She gets it down there. She's going to eat them alive tonight. He mentioned on the other end, Ryan, she's the big three-point shooter. Talked about uh, J.C. Uh, Justice, she's uh, 19 points per game as a freshman, so wow. look for her to get involved uh, very quickly here for Peebles. It's very early in the game, Mark, but I have yet to see that Peebles has any answer for Detweiler. Her first free throw is good. Well, especially if she gets positioned down low or catches the ball as deep as she did right there. That foul was on Madison Nichols, her first team second. Both free throws by Detweiler are true, so she has four of Notre Dame's six, and the Lady Titans have gotten off to a great start. They lead 6 to nothing as we come up on six minutes to go in the first period. Justice brings the ball across the timeline into the left corner. The ball is knocked out of play by Taylor Schmidt as Peebles was trying to work it into the left corner to J.C. Justice, the freshman. Possession will remain with Peebles. Tossing it in play will be McKinley Ryan. She's guarded by Detweiler, and boy, Detweiler can certainly pose problems on the inbounds passes. Peebles gets the ball in play to Justice. She gives it off to Bailey Justice, a couple of Justice girls on the floor, J.C. Justice. And yeah, more sisters. Bailey. Yeah. <laughs> and here's a double dribble called on McKinley Ryan. We had three sets of sisters in the first game, so if you weren't listening to the first game, that's the reason for that comment. <laughs> if that trend continues, we're going to have to call well, we first got... names, middle names, blood types, and maybe give Social Security numbers. And we got two Detweilers on the Notre Dame team as well. <laughs> Molly Hoover with the basketball right now for the Lady Titans, and she's called for steps. So that turnover gives the ball back to Peebles. 5.40 left to play in the first period. Notre Dame up to a 6-0 lead. Tossing the ball in will be McKinley Ryan. She looks, finds J.C. Justice. J.C. takes the inbounds pass. 
Taylor Schmidt applies the defense. Here's Bailey Justice, nearly loses the handle. Nearly coming away with the steal was Ava Hassel. J.C. Justice, left wing, trying to get by Schmidt. She'll drive the left baseline, pull up jumper from six feet, no good. Detweiler with the rebound. That's a good, strong move, just left the shot short. Hoover with the basketball now on the left point. She'll toss it out top to Detweiler. She passes right side to Taylor Schmidt. She's going to walk it out top and now pass it cross court back to Molly Hoover. Hoover drives into the lane. Beautiful bounce pass mm. into Lexi Smith and Great Smith look. her first two. First time we've mentioned Lexi Smith's name tonight, but she got into the act there courtesy of that great pass. It's 8-0 Notre Dame, just under five to go in the first. Bailey Justice works the ball ahead to Ryan. Guarded by Detweiler, deep on the left elbow. Ryan will dribble over to the top of the key and pass it back to Bailey Justice, who is guarded by Ava Hassel, just to the right of the key. Now to the left side. It is Ryan giving the ball off to J.C. Justice. She dribbles from the left elbow to the free throw line, pitches it over right side to Christian Reed. She can't knock down the three with the rebound is Notre Dame. Molly Hoover pulls down the board, quickly races into the front court, drives to the right corner, and pitches it to Detweiler at the top of the key. Inside to Lexi Smith. Can't get the shot to fall. Detweiler with the rebound. The stick back is in. Well, Detweiler's a double-double machine, and you can see why they're crashing the board. She came from the top of the key, grabbed that rebound, beat the people's defender to the basket, and scored it. 4-16 left to go in the first period. Coach Billy Joe Justice has seen just about enough of this. She's going to take a 30-second timeout, but we will hold things here to remind you that the winner of this contest between Notre Dame and Peebles will return to Jackson for a regional semifinal matchup against Waterford one week from tonight. While the regional semifinal will be played in Jackson, the regional championship will actually be moved to Pickerington. Area fans hope that the Notre Dame Lady Titans will be competing in those games and beyond. Off to certainly a good start tonight, taking the first step at least to the regional semifinal. 10 nothing to start here, but I'm sure Coach J.D. McKenzie wants them to keep the hammer down. No doubt about that. Tossing the ball in play for Peebles will be McKinley Ryan as the Lady Indians will go the length of the floor. J.C. Justice running the point. What pressure for a freshman to be the point guard. Here's Ryan, left side. She tosses it out top. Into the game is Geraldine Toller. Geraldine Toller, I beg your pardon. Here's Ryan driving the left baseline. She's going to draw the foul. I believe this is going to go on Lexi Smith, and Peebles will have two free throws coming their way. That's a pretty quick move right there. Lexi just not able to get over there, didn't beat her to the spot, and will pick up the personal. That's her first, team first on the Lady Titans. It occurs at the 356 mark with Notre Dame ahead 10 to nothing. Watching J.D. McKenzie over there. He was down in the crouch himself. He's into this ball game tonight. McKinley Ryan gives Peebles its first point at the 356 mark of quarter number one as she sinks her first free throw. She'll put down a couple dribbles, bend eye and fire. Her second one tickles the twine, and it's 10-2 Notre Dame. Here comes Molly Hoover up the near sideline. She'll work the ball ahead to Hassel. Hassel fires cross court to Schmidt. Three on the way, left it short with the rebound is J.C. Justice of Peebles. Justice works the ball ahead to Ryan, and Ryan lost her footing, passes a little bit behind her. McKinley Ryan went to the floor to get the ball. She's called for over and back, turnover Peebles. Go back to that shot by Schmidt, good three-point shooter. She just didn't quite get enough on that. It was a little bit short, but, but she can knock him down, and I'm sure she's going to get some more opportunities here tonight to do that. The original starting five still on the floor for Coach J.D. McKenzie's Lady Titans. Here's Hassel, left corner. She'll give it to Detweiler, high post. Kicks it out to Schmidt, right wing. Schmidt drives into the lane, kicks it out to Hassel. The freshman spots Boom. up for three. Nope. Just a little bit short, but with the rebound is Lexi Smith. The putback is good. Yeah, what a luxury to have. If it's not Detweiler, it's Lexi Smith down low to be able to get those offensive putbacks. Smith is six feet tall. Detweiler is 6'4". It's Notre Dame's version of the Twin Towers. The Lady Titans lead, push back to 10 points. It's 12 to 2 with three minutes to play in the opening period. Bailey Justice, right side, gives to J.C. Justice, her sister, at the free throw line. She's guarded by Schmidt. Nothing there for J.C. Justice. She'll back out beyond the arc, pack over, pass the ball over to Bailey Justice. She'll give it to Ryan in between the circles. Ryan goes right side to Toller. Back out front to Justice, drives into the lane. She finds Tatum Airy, left baseline. She can't knock down the jumper. Smith with the rebound. Here come the Lady Titans. Hassel. Far sideline, dribbles into the corner. Gives the ball off 
to Hoover. Around the perimeter to Schmidt, right side. She'll send it back over to Hoover on the left wing, guarded by J.C. Justice and Bailey Justice. Out front, it is Taylor Schmidt. She gives to Hassel, right corner. She has the ball ripped away from her by Toller, and a jump ball is called. The possession arrow will get the ball back to the People's Lady Indians, who trail 12 to 2 with two, two minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter. It looks like Peebles matches up with them pretty well out front. It's down low is where the problems have been for the Lady Indians so far here in the early moments of this game. First substitution of the game for Notre Dame, Clara Hash, five foot ten junior, will check into the contest to give Molly Hoover a rest. Clara Hash, one of those with a very high motor, so we're not getting any break out there with her on the floor. Bailey Justice works the ball up the floor for Peebles. Gives to J.C. Justice right corner. She's guarded by Hoover. Nice spin move by Justice. Knocks down the jumper from the right of the key. Good form. Uh, she can play. She looks like she's playing the part. Doesn't look like a freshman, but she's playing the part of a senior out there. She's got her first two points of the game. Also into the game for Notre Dame is Allie Smith, the five foot two senior. She checked in during the last stoppage of play. Another three-point threat out there for the Lady Titans. Here's Hassel into the lane. Up and Thank under. You. She'll get it to go. Speaking of players who do not play like freshmen, Ava Hassel, the five foot four guard, now with four points for the Notre Dame Lady Titans as their lead goes back to 10, 14 to 4, coming up on a minute to play in this first quarter at Jackson High School. And she averages 10.2 out there. Outstanding player. Here's J.C. Justice driving the left baseline. Loses the handle out of bounds. Turnover Peebles. Ball goes back to Notre Dame. Tossing the ball in play will be Hash. Running the point for the Lady Titans is Hassel. Hassel tosses the ball over to Schmidt left side. Back to Hassel along the near sideline. She'll work it into the right corner to Smith. Smith gives it to Detweiler. High post. She tried to feed it inside to Hash, but coming away with the steal for Peebles is Tatum Airy. Ball is loose. Jump ball is we'll called. The other way. Yep, it will be Notre Dame's basketball. Nice job by the Lady Titans. Allie Smith, who went to the floor to tie things up with Airy. Bailey Justice will have a seat for Peebles. Checking in for the Lady Indians is Madison Nichols, a senior, one of the original starting five for Coach Billy Joe Justice's team. Here's Detweiler at the free throw line. She'll kick it over left side to Schmidt. Drives to the high post. Into the corner. It's Smith. Smith tried to give it to Assel on the right wing, and the ball is knocked out of play by Justice. It's like Peebles trying to overplay a little bit when that ball comes down to the wing, and it goes back out top, trying to overplay in that passing lane. The inbounds pass taken by Schmidt. Schmidt gives to Hash. Back to Schmidt. Right corner. Out top to Allie Smith. J.C. Justice very active on the defensive end as well for Peebles. Yes, she is. We're down to 13 seconds to play in the quarter. Taylor Schmidt with the ball to Smith. Right corner. Three on the way. No good. Detwater with the rebound, and she'll lay it up and in. They got no answer for that. Detwater with eight points here in the first quarter. Desperation heave at the horn, and it is going to be a traveling violation, actually, prior to the shot, which was released by J.C. Justice. The first quarter comes to an end, 16 to four. Notre Dame off to a great start as the Lady Titans lead Peebles in this Division Four district final from Jackson High School. You're listening to Tournament Basketball on WNXT. When someone asks the question, where are we going to eat lunch, the choice is clear. Yes, whether it's lunch or dinner, go to Subway and choose from their terrific selection of subs, salads, or sandwiches. At Subway, less can be so much more. And be sure to ask about their catering. Eat fresh at Subway in Lucasville, West Portsmouth, East End Portsmouth, Waverly, or in Walmart. Wishing Notre Dame the best of luck. Don't put off knee or hip replacement surgery out of fear. 
King's Daughter's Rapid Recovery Program makes it possible for patients to get up and moving quickly and with less pain. Our surgeons, nurses, and therapists work closely with you and your loved ones to get you back to doing the things you enjoy. Orthopedic experts Jerry Trinidad, Jared Bentley, Luke Lester, and Evan C. Graves see patients in Portsmouth, Wheatersburg, and Jackson. Find out more. Call King's Daughter's Orthopedics at 740-351-0980. That's 740-351-0980. At Jackson High School, the second quarter has just gotten underway. Notre Dame leads people 16 to 4. The Lady Indians got the basketball to start the second and immediately turned it over. The ball goes back over to the Lady Titans, who have all kinds of substitutions during this stoppage of play. You know, the key stat I saw there in the first quarter, 8 to 1 on the rebounds for Notre Dame right now. Detweiler and Smith, a big reason as to why. Both in the game right now, along with Schmidt, Hassel and Molly Hoover. The original starting five. Here's a pull-up jumper by Schmidt. Does not draw iron, but Smith is there to get yet another. Notre Dame rebound. She'll pitch it out to Hassel. Right wing, out top to Hoover. Hoover dribbles up to the high post. She'll kick it over to Schmidt. Left corner, back out front to Hoover. Detweiler, high post, right side of the key. Gets to Hassel, drives inside. The running jumper will not go with the rebound for Peebles is Nichols. Did everything right, just didn't go in the basket. Bailey Justice trying to bring the ball up the near sideline. She's having difficulty doing so, thanks to great defense by Ava Hassel. And now a foul on Notre Dame, halting the clock momentarily with 7.03 left to play in the first half. Yeah, a little bit too much contact. They, she was riding her all the way up the court. I think Matt Orr let it go as long as he could before he felt like he had to blow the whistle there. So Hassel records her first personal foul, team second, both teams with two fouls. McKinley Ryan tosses the ball in play from the right baseline. Here's Bailey Justice for three. Got it. That was a good look. She spotted up top of the circle. They found her. Closeout didn't get there in time. Easy basket for people. 16 to 7. Smith gets the ball down low. Kicks it out on the perimeter. Here's Detweiler in the lane. She'll pitch it out to Hassel. She'll try it from beyond three-point land. No good. And with the rebound is Bailey Justice. Justice, who just hit a three the last trip down for Peebles. We'll try and help her team widow the Notre Dame lead down a little bit. Here is Peebles. Bailey D. Justice will track down the ball after it was knocked into the backcourt by Ava Hassel. Bailey Justice brings it up the near sideline, gives it to McKinley Ryan in the corner. She'll kick it out to J.C. Justice, who is guarded by Taylor Schmidt. Right side with the ball for Peebles is Madison Nichols. She gives it off to Christian Reed. Sophomore, Ryan, back to Reed. Top of the key to Justice. Bailey Justice swings it to J.C. Justice. She'll Ooh. give it off to Nichols. And we've got a foul called with 554 remains. That was a travel. It was a Traveling, traveling yes. violation prior when, to the foul. When he gave it off, when she gave it off there to, uh, to Nichols, Nichols shuffled the feet. Peebles now with seven turnovers as opposed to Notre Dame's three. 16-7, the Lady Titans up by nine with 5.45 left to play on a rolling second quarter clock. Schmidt with the ball. Gives to Detweiler. Swings it to Hassel. Right side, beautiful pass from Hassel inside to Smith who connects. Well, whether it's Smith or Detweiler, they post up, seal off nicely, and they're both of them do. And when they get it right there, you might as well just write two points down in the scorebook. Smith has six, Detweiler has eight. Eight and Notre Dame enjoys an 18 to seven lead with 5:20 to play in the first half. J.C. Justice top of the key, guarded by Schmidt. Justice drives to the high post, tried to flick the ball over to Nichols. It went through her hands, out of play. Another people's turnover, and that would be number eight. That's a couple tough possessions there for Nichols. She had the travel there, and then. Allowed the ball just to go right through her hands right there. It's going to be a full time out here for Peebles. We'll take one as well with 5-11 remaining in the second period. Notre Dame enjoys an 11-point lead over Peebles. This is Girls High School Tournament Basketball on WNXT. The Scioto River. Wow. Just saying the name is enough to make my mouth water. So what are we waiting for? Let's visit the Scioto River. Tender, thick, and juicy steaks prepared how you like. Hearty ribs with a tasty barbecue sauce and a full allotment of sides. Dine in or take the taste of the Scioto River home with you. Open seven days a week. Phone 353-9329 to place your order. And don't forget, group catering is available. Visit the Scioto River. 
1024 Gallia Street, Portsmouth. This special presentation of a Girls Division IV District Final Doubleheader from Jackson High School is being presented in part by Dan Cassidy at the Barrett Murphy Insurance Agency, by Chuck and Jamie Detweiler's Area Subway Restaurants, by the Glockner Family of Dealerships, and by Sherman Cricker Insurance. Congratulations to both the new Boston Lady Tigers and the Notre Dame Lady Titans on their 2018 sectional championships. With just over five minutes remaining before halftime, the Notre Dame Lady Titans lead Peebles 18-7 in this Girls Division IV District Championship game being played at Jackson High School. Notre Dame with the ball going the length of the floor. Running the point is Molly Hoover. She's guarded very tightly by J.C. Justice. Hassel, top of the key to Schmidt, left side, around the perimeter. Hoover in the corner, penetrates into the lane. Ball is knocked out of play. Last touch by a Peebles Lady Indian. Possession will remain with Notre Dame. 4.51 left to go before the break. Notre Dame maintaining an 11-point edge, 18-7. The Lady Titans trying to capture a district title and improve to 25-0 in the process. A Notre Dame win tonight. We'll set up a matchup against Waterford next Thursday right back here in Jackson. Here's a three by Schmidt from the right side. No good with the rebound is Madison Nichols of Peebles. The Lady Indians push the ball up the floor. Toller started to drive inside and thought better of it. She'll kick it out. Now, Lexi Smith was closing in on her there defensively, so probably a smart move. J.C. Justice drives the left baseline, and the freshman connects on the jumper. Oh, you can see, she's a nice player. She has all the moves, Chuck. She's got four of her team's nine points, and it's 18-9 to nine as Peebles has cut the Notre Dame lead in half and a turnover by Notre Dame as Detwater was trying to toss the ball into Smith. That pass too tall. It sails out of play. Possession goes back over to Peebles. Again, they've not been real crisp in the half-court set where Notre Dame has uh, done well tonight, is on the glass getting those putbacks. And like I said, I think Peebles matches up with them pretty well in the backcourt. Sophomore Tatum Airy has re-entered the contest for Peebles. McKinley Ryan with the ball. She'll bring it across the mid-court stripe. Four minutes left to play in the second period. Peebles trailing Notre Dame by nine. J.C. Justice. Passes to Airy, right side, back to J.C. Justice, top of the key. Justice guarded by Detweiler. J.C. Justice with a deep straightaway three in and out, no good. Lexi Smith with the rebound. That's a big miss right there. That would have cut it to six. Notre Dame works it up to Detweiler, and that's a big bucket for Katie Detweiler. And when you call that with the Detweiler basket there, that's a quick five-point swing. Ten points for Detweiler. She becomes the first player in this contest from either side to reach double figures. Three on the way by McKinley Ryan. Counter. Uh, she's the three-point shooter. They're going to have to locate her on the defensive end. 20-12. to 12, Notre Dame's lead. Trim to eight. Hassel to Detweiler. Out top. Gets it off to Schmidt. Left corner. She goes cross court. Back to Hassel. Out front. It's Hoover. Hoover drives into the lane. The running one-hander. Off the back iron. No good. Smith with the rebound. Pitches it out to Hassel. She works it into Detweiler. Off the window and in. That was a tough one by Detweiler, but she got it to go. That's some contact there. That's very close to an and one. As, uh, Ryan bumped her a little bit, but she was able to stay with it, keep her ground, and get the basket. A dozen points now for six foot four junior Katie Detweiler. 22-12. Notre Dame's lead back to 10. McKinley Ryan drives the baseline. Contact between her and Lexi Smith, and Smith will be whistled for the foul. That's her second. Yeah, again, just about a half step slow. Did not beat her to the spot. Both of her fouls have been blocking fouls just like that, trying to swing over and help. Just didn't get there. McKinley Ryan goes to the free throw line. She has five points in the contest. She knocked down a big three just moments ago. She was at the free throw line in the first quarter where she made two. And she is now three for three at the stripe as her first here is good. Re-entering the game for Notre Dame will be Clara Hash, a five foot ten junior. She'll give Lexi Smith a break. Also out of the lineup for Notre Dame is Molly Hoover. Allie Smith is in for her. And the second free throw by Ryan is good. McKinley Ryan has seven, which leads Peebles. It's 22 to 14. Smith, her cross court pass. pass. It was nearly intercepted by Bailey Justice, but it went through the hands of Justice and somehow found its way to Taylor Schmidt. Here's Smith, right side. To Hash, high post, gives it out to Hassel, drives inside, beautiful bounce pass to Detweiler. 
She delivers with two more. Detweiler now with 14 points, 24 to 14. Notre Dame in front with just over two minutes to play in the half. J.C. Justice left side, guarded by Taylor Schmidt. Justice out top to Airy. Airy has the ball slapped away from her and stolen by Hassel. Hassel and Notre Dame quickly in transition with numbers. The freshman, Hassel, will take it herself, and she'll get the layup. Doing it on both ends of the floor. She's got six points and whistles, sound, halting play, a foul in the backcourt. And this is going to go on Notre Dame's Allie Smith. That is her first fourteen foul on the Lady Titans. It occurs at the 144 mark of quarter number two with Notre Dame in front, 26 to 14. Nichols will re-enter the game for Peebles as Tatum Airy checks out. Right now in the game for Coach J.D. McKenzie's Lady Titans are Allie Smith, Clara Hash, Katie Detweiler, Taylor Schmidt, and Ava Hassel. McKinley Ryan with the ball ooh, top ooh, of the key. Ooh. She just about traveled. And maybe she did, but it wasn't goal. <laughs> I think maybe she did. <laughs> Here's J.C. Justice driving inside. She can't hit the jumper. Hash with the rebound for Notre Dame. The Lady Titans trying to add to their 12-point lead this trip down. Schmidt has it. Right wing. Cross-court pass into the left corner to Smith. Smith gives it to Hassel. She is fouled by J.C. Justice, and that will halt the clock with a minute 15 to go in the first half. That's tried to close a little bit too late there, and she made too much contact with her. I don't think she liked that call, but she's going to make contact there right in front of the official. Matt Oren was three feet away from her when he made that call. That was an easy call for Matt to make. That foul on J.C. Justice is her first team third into the game is Christian Reed for Peebles. J.C. Justice will stay out there with those, or with that one foul that she just picked up, I should say. Here's Smith, right wing. She works it into Hash. Hash loses the handle. The ball is stolen away from her by Madison Nichols. Madison Nichols, good weak side help that time to come from behind and get the steal. Peebles works the ball ahead to Toller, and Toller is fouled on her way to the rack. She'll be at the free throw line in just a few moments to shoot two. Well, that's where the one advantage you might have with somebody like that winder out there on the floor is the quickness factor. She got around her there, got the, the position, and was able to draw the foul. That foul is on Katie Detweiler, her first team fifth. Toller's first free throw is no good. Be sure and stay with us at the break for the Holbrook's Hometown Pharmacy Halftime Show. We'll check individual scoring as well as team stats at that time. Toller's second. Stratus Koss off the front iron, no good. And we've got a foul on Peebles as Taylor Schmidt came away with the rebound. She was shoved from behind. And this is going to go on Madison Nichols. That's her second. Team fourth. First two misses of the line tonight for Peebles there with those uh, two blanks. McKinley Ryan, the three-point shooter senior for Peebles, back on the floor. Yep. And she's a perfect four for four at the free throw line. Here's Smith. Notre Dame brings the ball up the floor. Peebles jumped into a little makeshift press there, but Notre Dame had no issues with it. Down to 35 seconds to go in the first half. 26 to 14 Notre Dame. Schmidt tries to work it inside to Lexi Smith. Smith cannot save it in play. Turnover, Notre Dame. A little too high on the pass. Tried to skip it with a lob pass. And Smith couldn't control it. Tried to save it in, but was unsuccessful in doing so. So Lexi Smith will check out of the game. Clara Hash back in. Peebles basketball. 25 seconds to go in the first half. Bailey Justice. Brings the ball up the floor. Nice effort by Taylor Schmidt of Notre Dame as Bailey Justice was trying to work the ball up to J.C. Justice. And Schmidt, sliding to her knees, knocks that ball out of play into the Notre Dame bench. Possession, however, will remain with Peebles. Notre Dame's been very active. A number of deflections they've had here in this first half. Ryan tosses it into Jaylee Justice. She drives the right baseline. Her jumper from the right block, no good. Detweiler with the rebound, and we've got a jump ball as Detweiler the other way. and Justice were battling for that board. So Notre Dame with 10.4 seconds to go the length of the floor and get a look. That's plenty of time. I wonder, J.C. Justice made a good move, just laid it up too strong off the glass. Big miss there. That would have cut it to 10 if she'd been able to drop that in. Boy, she's a fine player, especially when you take into consideration that she's just a freshman. Here's a turnover by Notre Dame. The Lady Titans fine freshman, Ava Hassel. 
tossed the ball up the floor. Pass was a little bit too high over the head of Schmidt. Out of bounds it goes. So Peebles will inbound the ball from the near corner. Almost the full length of the floor. Peebles will have to go with just under seven seconds to play. Desperation heat from three-point land by McKinley Ryan. Way off target, and that will bring the first half to an end. It was a good one for Notre Dame. The Lady Titans take a 26-14 lead into the break. This is a girls Division Four district final on Fox Sportsman's AM 1260 WNXT. The Scioto River. Wow. Just saying the name is enough to make my mouth water. So what are we waiting for? Let's visit the Scioto River. Tender, thick, and juicy steaks prepared how you like. Hearty ribs with a tasty barbecue sauce and a full allotment of sides. Dine in or take the taste of the Scioto River home with you. Open seven days a week. Phone 353-9329 to place your order. And don't forget, group catering is available. Visit the Scioto River. 1024 Gallia Street, Portsmouth. This special presentation of a girls Division IV district final doubleheader from Jackson High School is being presented in part by Dan Cassidy at the Barrett Murphy Insurance Agency, by Chuck and Jamie Detweiler's Area Subway Restaurants, by the Glockner Family of Dealerships, and by Sherman Cricker Insurance. Congratulations to both the new Boston Lady Tigers and the Notre Dame Lady Titans on their 2018 sectional championships. Before you buy insurance, there are two things you should know. You can buy your policy from a one company agent who works directly for one insurance company. His choice of policies is limited, and so is yours. Or, you can buy from an independent insurance agent who represents several companies. In our area, look for the big eye at your independent insurance agency. Stop by the Hunter Williams Agency, the Sherman Cricker Insurance Agency, or the Dyer Insurance Agency. If you want everything from your carpet, beauty, durability, and comfort, you want a carpet from Shawmark. From comfortable Berber styles to luxurious cut pile, Shawmark has a carpet to suit every taste. Shawmark also has the incomparable Anything Goes, the best performing carpet available. The wide array of gorgeous colors and textures of Shawmark carpet at Harris Floor Covering, 610 9th Street, Portsmouth. You're sure to find selections that will make your corner of the world more beautiful, more comfortable, and more like home for many years to come. Harris Floor Covering now accepts Visa or MasterCard. Welcome to the Holbrook's Hometown Pharmacy Halftime Show. Coming to you from Jackson High School, where at the break, the Notre Dame Lady Titans lead Peebles 26-14 in this Girls Division IV District Championship from Jackson High School. Being local folks themselves, Brandon Holbrook and his staff are proud supporters of local high school sports. The good people at Holbrook's Pharmacy will see to it that you won't have to wait long while your prescription is filled, and they'll take the time to get to know you, explain your medication, and answer any questions you may have. Holbrook's offers convenient drive through service. They're open from 9 a.m. until 6.30 Monday through Friday and from 9 until 1 on Saturdays. Visit Brandon Holbrook and his staff at Holbrook's Hometown Pharmacy located at 37C Lucasville, Mintford Road in Lucasville. Here in just a few moments, we'll be taking a look at the first half stats, both individual scoring, team numbers, and our Barrett Murphy Insurance turnover report. But first, let's take a look at where the hometown broadcasting company of Portsmouth will be over the next several days. Tomorrow, believe it or not, a Friday off from basketball, which is really hard for Mark Williams and myself to imagine. <laughs> but on Saturday, we will get back after it. Today's Saturday will begin, as always, with the Saturday morning sports line, which you'll be able to tune into right here on Fox Sportsman's AM 1260, as well as on WNXT Sports using the TuneIn Radio app on your smartphone. Listen in starting at 9 o'clock in the morning. Saturday mornings to hear what the area's coaches have to say about their players and programs. That's the Saturday morning sports line, an area tradition for nearly 40 years. Mark Williams and Christian Downey will be talking with our area's coaches. I'm usually there, but not this Saturday because <laughs> Keith Prost and I are going to hit the road around 10, 15 or so to head to the Waverly Downtown Arena where we will be bringing you live coverage of a girls' division three district championship game as Minford will take on Southeastern Ross. You'll be able to hear that contest here on AM 1260. The pregame will start at approximately 11.40. Tip-off is slated for noon. Later on Saturday, Mark Williams and Dennis DeCamp will be live from the Convo in Athens to bring you all the play-by-play -play as the Wietersburg Pirates take on Lynchburg Clay. That game will air live on Classic Rock 107.5 Debris. The pregame will start at 4.25. Then on Sunday, 
we will return to the Convocation Center for a pair of boys Division IV district semifinal games. The first will air on Mix 99.3 as the Southwebster Jeeps take on the new Boston Glenwood Tigers. Pre-game will start at 325, and then immediately following that contest on Classic Rock 107.5 The Breeze Sunday afternoon, you'll be able to hear the Green Bobcats take on Gloucester Trimble with the pregame starting at 510. Best of luck to all local teams. Come Monday, Mark, I hope we're talking about more high school tournament games that we will be bringing our loyal listeners. Let's take a look at the individual scoring from the first half. First for the Notre Dame Lady Titans, who lead Peebles 26-14. to Katie Detweiler leads all scorers in the contest with 14 points. Freshman Ava Hassel has six, and Lexi Smith has six. That's the 26 points for Notre Dame. For the Peebles Lady Indians, freshman J.C. Justice has four. Bailey Justice, her senior sister, has knocked down a three. And McKinley Ryan has seven. It was 16-4 to four, Notre Dame at the end of one. And for the Lady Titans, it's a good thing they started off the game in the manner in which they did because these two teams played even in the second quarter, each scoring 10 points. That brings us to our halftime score once again of 26 to 14. Let's take a look at the team stats now. They are a service of Nancy Hawk at the Real Estate Gallery with locations in both Wheatersburg and Portsmouth. For all of your real estate needs, call 574-9902 or visit online at realestategallery.com. Mark? Notre Dame shooting at 52% in the first half, 11 of 21, but they are 0 of 5 from long range. Peebles, 4 of 11. 36%, 36%, they are 2 of 5 from three-point land for 40%. Free throws, 4 for 4 for Notre Dame, 4 for 6 for Peebles. Rebounding, this is really the big part of the story in the first half. 13 to 4 overall advantage for Notre Dame. Seven defensive rebounds, six offensive rebounds already for the Lady Titans in the game. All the rebounds for Peebles on the defensive end. And on the assist, six assists for Notre Dame, three assists for Peebles. Let's now take a look at the turnover report. It's a service at the Merritt Murphy Insurance Agency at 1031 Gallia Street in Portsmouth. Isn't it time you turned your insurance needs over to Barrett Murphy? Call Dan Cassidy at 353-3121. Here's where it evened out a little bit. Looked like early on Peebles was going to have a big disadvantage, if you will, uh, with the turnovers they were committing early on. They ended up with nine in the first half, and Notre Dame had seven turnovers. The second quarter, they weren't real crisp, especially in the half court. Thank you, Mark. That was the Barrett Murphy Insurance Agency turnover report. Dan Cassidy at the Barrett Murphy Insurance Agency is a big reason tonight's broadcast is being made possible. A big thank you goes to Dan, as well as Chuck and Amy Detweiler of the area subway restaurants around Scioto County, the Glockner family of dealerships, and Sherman Cricker Insurance. They, in part, are making this broadcast a reality. A doubleheader of Girls Division IV district championship play. In the first game tonight, heard right here on AM 1260, it was Waterford defeating New Boston 55-22. to The Lady Wildcats await the winner of this game between Notre Dame and Peebles. At the break, it's the Lady Titans ahead 26-14. to Checking one other score to pass along in Boys Division II District semifinal action from Athens earlier in the evening. The Fairland Dragons defeated the Benton County Vikings 64 64- and we also have at the end of three the other Division II matchup, Gallia County leading, or Gallia Academy, pardon me, leading Fairfield Union 36 to 34. You've been tuned in to the Holbrook's Hometown Pharmacy Halftime Show. We'll get the second half underway when we return. Notre Dame leads Peebles by a dozen. This is Girls High School Tournament Basketball on WNXT. Thursday. Now that's a day. Thursday is awesome. Thursday is the bomb. Why is Thursday so awesome? Well, because it's boneless Thursdays at Buffalo Wild Wings. Every Thursday, you can get specially priced boneless wings spun fresh in your choice of any of their over 20 sauces and seasonings. So hurry up and get to your local Buffalo Wild Wings this Thursday. You'll know it's Thursday by how awesome it feels. Or you can just look at the calendar. Whatever works. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings. Sports. This broadcast is being presented by Gamps, John Deere, and Convenient Mart. Bob and Floyd's Tire Service. S-O-M-C. 
Dyer Insurance, Gleam Firearms, Larry Moore Trophies and Sporting Goods, Sherman Cricker Insurance, Penn Station East Coast Subs, Clark's Pump and Shop, Luke's Supply, Hunter Williams Insurance, Gaddy's Pizza, Donnie Martin Heating and Air, Bus Mac Equipment Transport, as well as the Glockner family of dealerships. The Notre Dame Lady Titans lead Peebles 26-14 as we get set to begin the second half. It is just about time for the second half toss-in, which is a service of Harris Floor Covering at 610 9th Street in Portsmouth, the area's leading floor covering contractor. Harris Floor Covering has everything for all your floor covering needs. Call Stephen Harris at 353-7959. Peebles will get the ball to begin quarter number three. It looks like the original... Starting five on the floor for Peebles, freshman J.C. Justice, senior McKinley Ryan, sophomore Christian Reed, senior Madison Nichols, and senior Bailey Justice. They are already on the floor ready to go, and after breaking the huddle, here come the Lady Titans. They'll have their original starting five on the floor to begin the second half as well. They are 5'5", senior Molly Hoover, 5'4", sophomore Taylor Schmidt, 6'4", junior Katie Detweiler, 5'4", freshman Ava Hassel, and 6'0", senior Lexi Smith. McKinley Ryan will toss the ball in play for Peebles. She kicks it into the backcourt to Bailey Justice, who is guarded tightly by Ava Hassel. Justice finally works the ball across the timeline. She gets the ball to McKinley Reed. Reed tried to give it back, but Ava Hassel deflected the pass, and Lexi Smith comes away with the steal. Now Notre Dame hustles down to the offensive end, loses the handle on the ball. J.C. Justice had it momentarily, but then fell out of bounds with the ball, so possession will stay with Notre Dame. And Notre Dame throws a half-court trap on him here to get that steal. Not sure the Peebles was ready for that. Molly Hoover will toss the ball in play from the left baseline. She finds Hassel, right corner, drives the baseline, and lays it up off the glass and in. That was a freshman that made that move. A freshman who now has eight <laughs> points in this game, and Notre Dame has doubled up on the Lady Indians. It's 28-14 to 14 with 7.25 left in the third quarter. Bailey Justice bounces to J.C. Justice. Taylor Schmidt guards. J.C. comes up toward the three-point arc, passes over to Christian Reed. Three on the way, does not draw iron. The ball goes out of bounds off of Madison Nichols. Possession goes back to Notre Dame. Detweiler works it into Molly Hoover. Notre Dame's going to slow the pace a little bit this trip up the floor, at least for the time being. A little 2-1-2 zone pressure here by Peebles. Notre Dame works the ball up the court. Detweiler gives it to Smith, high post. She'll kick it over to Schmidt momentarily around the perimeter to Hassel right side. To Detweiler, high post. Schmidt in the left corner. Schmidt, cross-court pass to Hassel. Ooh, and travel yep. is called for steps. Moved her pivot foot. Turnover Notre Dame. Those have been somewhat rare tonight. Christian Reed will toss the ball in play directly in front of the Notre Dame bench. J.C. Justice takes the inbounds pass. Boy, J.C. Justice. And Ava Hassel, two freshmen, going to be good for a long time for both of these programs. And Taylor Schmidt, who is guarding her just a sophomore. So i got a feeling that they may match up again in the future before it's all said and done. Ball knocked out of play momentarily. Possession remains with Peebles. McKinley Ryan with the basketball as the ball is put in play. J.C. Justice dribbles over to the free throw line. She kicks it to Nichols. Back out top to Justice. J.C. Justice. To the foul line. Gives it to Nichols. She finds Reed. Left corner. Long range deuce from just a couple feet inside the three point arc. It's no good, but Nichols gets the rebound. She tosses it out to J.C. Justice. Gives to Bailey Justice. She fires to McKinley Ryan. Back over to Bailey Justice, who will give it to Nichols. Nichols, right wing to J.C. Justice. Left elbow. Guarded by Taylor Schmidt. Justice, top of the key. Guarded by Hassel now. Bailey Justice with the ball after a pass from J.C. She'll give it over to McKinley Ryan. Left side. Here's J.C. Justice, left wing, dribble out top, gives to Bailey Justice, to McKinley Ryan, left corner, drives the baseline, and she will be fouled, and this is going to go on Ava Hassel, and that will be the second on the 5-4 freshman guard. Yeah, got caught with her hand in the cookie jar there, tried to reach in, in smack it away. Looked like she's got it, but not in the eyes of the official. McKinley Ryan tosses the ball in to J.C. Justice, left corner. Nice little... Crossover dribble by Justice. She's guarded by Schmidt. 
Justice in between the rings, approaches the three-point arc, passes over to Christian Reed. The pass got by her, but right place, right time was Madison Nichols. Bailey Justice with the ball, right wing. She'll dribble out top. Contact between her and Ava mm. Hassel. No call. J.C. Justice, high post, drives right of the key. Travel. And you are correct, Mark. Turnover, Peebles. The ball will go over to the Lady Titans. 5.15 to play in the third quarter. Notre Dame leads 28-14. to 14. Molly Hoover takes the inbounds pass. Hoover works the ball up the floor to Hassel, guarded by Nichols. Hoover drives toward the baseline, feeds it cross court to Schmidt, drives the left baseline, can't get the shot to go. Lexi Smith with the rebound, and she is fouled while attempting a putback. Lexi Smith will visit the line. There again, another offensive rebound for Notre Dame. They've just not been able to answer down there. Detweiler and Lexi Smith, uh, it's from the word go tonight, Notre Dame has had the advantage down there, and that's why they have the lead they have. Madison Nichols picks up the foul for Peebles. That's her third, team first at the half. Lexi Smith unable to connect on her first free throw. Christian Reed will have a seat for Peebles. Entering the game in her place will be Geraldine Toller. The second free throw by Lexi Smith is good. So she splits the pair. That miss a moment ago, the first miss at the line tonight for Notre Dame. 29 to 14. 455 to play third quarter in this girls' division four district championship. Notre Dame has not trailed in this contest. Here's Bailey Justice dribbling at center circle. She'll pass it left side to Reed. Reed gets it off to Toller. She'll swing it right side to Justice. She gives it off to her sister, J.C. Justice, and the younger Justice knocks down the triple from straight away. She didn't need a lot of room to uh, get that shot up and was able to knock it down. Quickly, the other end, it is Notre Dame feeding Lexi Smith on the right block, and Smith delivers. She scored the last three for Notre Dame. 31-17, the Lady Titans in front. Bailey Justice. Brings the ball across the timeline. Spotting up for three from the left side is McKinley Ryan. Whistle sounded just they got as she a foul away the from ball. the ball, I think. Matt Oren comes over to the officials' table. And the it foul is, is called. Detweiler. Yes, sir. Detweiler picking up her second personal foul. Team second on Notre Dame this half. 4.09 to play in the third quarter. 31 to 17, the Lady Titans lead. It's too early to start thinking about it, but a Notre Dame-Waterford matchup would be quite intriguing <laughs> next Thursday in a regional semifinal. Notre Dame has to close the deal here, though, and I guarantee you Peoples is not going to lie down without putting up a fight. The Lady Indians probably have another run or two left in them before this one is over, and we still have a lot of basketball to play. Caitlin Willie just checked in for the Lady Indians. She is a senior. She gives the ball off to Toller. Toller finds Ryan. Can't hit the three from the left elbow. Smith, I think Detweiler actually got a piece of that. Smith got the rebound. She then had the ball knocked away from her, but Hoover tracked it down. Hoover racing into the front court. She'll lose the handle out of play. His possession goes back over to Peebles. Re-entering the contest for Notre Dame is Allie Smith, 5'2 senior. Let's say turnover number is probably a little too high for J.D. McKenzie's liking tonight uh, for Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. He is the type that you can just tell during all the conversations we've had with him. He strives for perfection. Notre Dame has been pretty doggone close tonight. 31-17, the Lady Titans lead. Here's J.C. Justice at the top of the key. She hit a three from there a little earlier in the quarter. Here's McKinley Ryan trying her luck from Crayville. She launches this one from the left corner. No good. Didn't get her hand on that one, but Detweiler affected that shot. Hassel got the rebound. Notre Dame quickly ahead. Lexi Smith left block. She can't hit the bunny. Rebound J.C. Justice. Justice quickly to the offensive end. She passes to Bailey Justice. Gives to Ryan. Left corner. Inside to Willie. Willie has the ball taken away from her by Smith. Turnover Peebles. Ava Hassel now with the ball. She'll work it up to Allie Smith. Inside to Detweiler. She's fouled while in the act of shooting. Shot didn't go, but she has earned herself a visit to the free throw line. Well, Caitlin Willie provides a little bit of size off the bench for Peebles. They're trying to bring her in there to body up either against Lexi Smith or Detweiler. She committed the foul that time. So let's see if that changes the course here a little bit for Peebles. That's her first. Team second. Detweiler's first free throw. Left it short. 
Detweiler with 14 points in the game. She has yet to score in the second half. She was two for two at the free throw line prior to that miss just seconds ago. Checking back into the Peebles lineup, she had a brief rest, is J.C. Justice. Caitlin Willey will have a seat. Second free throw by Detweiler, good. 32-17, a 15-point lead for Notre Dame, 2.45 to play in the third quarter. J.C. Justice runs the point for Peeble. She'll pass to Ryan left side, out top to Reed. Reed gets it off to Bailey Justice, who is guarded by Notre Dame's Ava Hassel. Out top to J.C. Justice, in between the rings. Schmidt applies to D. The Justice girls play a little pitch and catch. Ryan now gets into the act. She'll give it off to J.C. Justice, drives the baseline, a foul prior to the shot. J.C. Justice, quick first step that time and was able to get by Taylor Schmidt. Schmidt draws the foul. That will be her first, team third. Clara Hash will re-enter for Notre Dame. Lexi Smith will have a seat. 32-17, to 17, the Lady Titans lead with 2.19 to play in the third quarter. Madison Nichols back into the lineup for Peebles as well. Ryan will inbound the ball to J.C. Justice. Right side, jumper, good. Nice ball fake. She let the defender go by and was able to put the ball in. J.C. Justice with nine points, five of which she scored here in the third quarter. 32-19, to 19, Notre Dame by Baker's dozen. Here is a three attempted by Allie Smith, no good. And the air ball sells out of play. Possession will go back over to Peebles. Allie Smith hadn't been able to find the range tonight. Has a reputation of being a good three-point shooter, but they've not gone down tonight. They've struggled from three-point land tonight, Notre Dame has. Here's J.C. Justice working the ball up to McKinley Ryan in the front court. A minute 52 left to play on a moving third-quarter clock here at Jackson High School. J.C. Justice top of the key. Gives off to Bailey Justice, right wing. Bailey Justice out top. Looks over the situation, backs out towards center circle. She'll give it off to J.C. Justice, deep on the left elbow. A minute 35 left in this third quarter. Bailey Justice now, top of the key to McKinley Ryan, right side. She works it in to Christian Reed. Reed loses the handle on the ball, steps on the baseline, turnover, Peebles. Pass inside, she made a good cut. There was a little bit of contact, but apparently not enough to uh, warrant a foul. So the ball goes back the other direction. Notre Dame will bring it to distance. And Allie Smith is going to be fouled with a minute 21 remaining in the third quarter with Notre Dame ahead, 32-19. to 19. Madison Nichols, that's four on her. There is, third team foul. This half, each team now with three fouls. Nichols will have a seat with those four fouls as Tatum Airy re-enters. Here's Schmidt taking the inbounds pass from Hash. Allie Smith, left side, gets to Ava Hassel, drives through the lane, can't get the layup to go. Clara Hash with a nice rebound. She'll kick it out to Smith, left elbow. She sends it cross court to Taylor Schmidt, top of the key to Hassel. Hassel and Schmidt pass the ball back and forth. Now it will be Allie Smith getting into the act. Left side, drives into the lane, and she is fouled. This is going to go on McKinley Ryan. And I believe that Allie Smith is going to have some free throws coming away. I called it on uh, Bailey Justice. Oh, they did. did. Yep. That will be her second, team fourth. <laughs> Judging by the body language and facial expression of McKinley Ryan, I believe she thought that was on her because her jaw hit the <laughs> ground. <laughs> Maybe there's a little bit more clarity now that she realizes that it wasn't called on her. Smith made the first, her second in the air, and it too is true. So Allie Smith with her first two points of the game. She has extended the Notre Dame lead back to 15 at 34 to 19, just under a minute to go in the third. McKinley Ryan passes the ball to J.C. Justice. She'll spot up for three and hit it. Don't want her to start getting hot. She can shoot them back into the ball game and double figures now with 12. That's her second three ball of the game, both of which she's made this quarter. Peebles turning up the defensive pressure. Here's Hassel to Schmidt, right corner. To Smith, left wing, gives it to Hassel, drives toward the high post, kicks it out. There they got to one. Taylor Schmidt, the high arcing three will go. So Notre Dame answers with a tray of its own, 37-22. Yeah, then Taylor picks up a foul on the uh, front end of the press there, reaching around as Justice tried to get by her. You see that often after a player makes a big 
offensive play. They get a little over anxious and then come right back and commit a foul that they probably wish they hadn't have. That's the second personal foul on Taylor Schmidt, team fourth. I would say J.D. McKenzie probably wishes she had committed. <laughs> <laughs> Here is Bailey Justice. Gives to J.C. Justice. She drives the left baseline. She's fouled on her way to the rack, and she'll visit the free throw line for two shots with 3.4 ticks of the clock remaining in the third. I think we're going to start seeing her become a lot more aggressive on the offensive end to try to get her team back into the ball game here. Waning seconds of the third quarter going into the fourth quarter, probably see a lot of that. Her first free throw in the air and good. J.C. Justice has 13 points in the game, and she has scored nine of those in the third quarter. If you can knock down this free throw, that's a double-digit quarter for the freshman. Notre Dame, one more foul to give before the bonus as well. The second free throw by Justice is true. 37-24, desperation heaved by Ava Hassel. Oh, oh, wow. In and out, no good. Boy, that was just from beyond half court, and that nearly went. To the fourth quarter we go. It's Notre Dame 37, Peebles 24. This is girls district championship basketball on Fox Sportsman AM 1260 WNXT. Oh, hey, Dad. Grab your stuff. We're going to Wendy's. I need to share something with you. Okay. Wendy's taco salad, fresh chopped lettuce topped with chili, cheese, and salsa. Served with tortilla chips and memories. Sweetie, I know you can't remember living through the 90s, but you're about to know what it tasted like. I know all about the 90s. I love classic rock. Uh, boy bands are not classic rock. Wendy's Taco Salad. Try it again for the first time. This broadcast is being presented by Jeff Smith State Farm Insurance, Portsmouth Block, Portsmouth Building Supply, the Don Hall GM Super Center, Trent and Tony Niddle Service Center, Conley Trucking, Conley River Terminal, the Scioto County Cancer Center, the McKinley Funeral Home, Portsmouth Insurance, a TAH Benefits Partner, the Gathering Place, Monroe's Frame and Collision, King's Daughters Portsmouth Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the Scioto County Career Technical Center, and M construction. We are set to begin the fourth quarter at Jackson High School. Notre Dame leads people 37 to 24 in this girls division four district final. I'm Chuck Greenslade along with Mark Williams. Dennis Camp also along for the ride tonight. Keeping stats. It looks like they're is some moisture on the floor over in front of the people's bench. Don't know if that's perspiration or if somebody spilled a drink, but all hands are on deck over there mopping that up. So we'll, quite a quite a bit of moisture, whatever it is. Yeah. It could perhaps have been a some, a wa- some water or something got uh, got spilled over there. And they're bringing the the squeegee out. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> if that won't do it, the ShamWow is next. Don't forget to tune in to the Saturday Morning Sports Line every Saturday morning here on Fox Sports with AM 1260 starting at 9 a.m. Listen to what our area's coaches have to say about their players and teams. That's the Saturday Morning Sports Line, an area tradition for nearly 40 years. And be sure to listen for the Barber Auto Parts replay of the week all week long on the hometown broadcasting family of stations, which include Mix 99.3, Classic Rock 107.5, The Breeze, and Fox Sportsmith AM 1260. Visit the Barber Auto Parts location nearest you with locations in both Portsmouth and Lucasville. No high school basketball tomorrow, but we will make up for that over the weekend. On Saturday, we will be live from the Waverly Downtown Arena, where the Minford Lady Falcons will take on Southeastern Ross in a girls division three district championship game. You'll be able to hear that contest on AM 1260. Coverage will start at 1140, tip off at noon. Saturday afternoon, a little later in the day, on Classic Rock 107.5, The Breeze, you'll be able to hear the Wietersburg boys play Lynchburg Clay in a Division Three district semifinal. We have two boys Division Four district semifinals for you on Sunday. The first will be aired on Mix 99.3 as the Southwebster Jeeps take on the new Boston Glenwood Tigers. Coverage will commence at 325 and then Sunday at 510 on Classic Rock 107.5, The Breeze, you'll be able to hear the Green Bobcats take on Gloucester Trimble. So that is what is ahead for all your local sports information. Be sure and check us out on Facebook at Fox Sports 1260 
dash Portsmouth. Mark does a great job keeping everybody updated on what's happening in the world of local sports. That was a serious spill, but they finally got it cleared up over there and we can get back to play. I thought Hazmat was going to be called <laughs> in there for a moment. Notre Dame has the ball to begin the fourth quarter. The Lady Titans lead Peebles 37-24 and a quick Off- offensive foul away from the ball. I think they got that while no, Clara Hash. That is going to be just the first personal foul on Clara Hash, the five foot ten junior. That is the sixteenth foul on Notre Dame. So one more Notre Dame foul, and Peebles will be in the bonus, unless it's a player control foul like we just witnessed. Right. Peebles with the basketball going the length of the court. Bailey Justice works it up to McKinley Ryan. She'll give it off to J.C. Justice, who had the hot hand in the third quarter. She has 14 points in the game, 10 of them in the third period. I look for them to start running some stuff for her. They didn't really that time and turned it over. Yep. Ayers started to drive the left side of the lane, tried to kick it to Christian Reed on the baseline. Pass was off target. It goes out of bounds, and possession goes back to the Lady Titans. All right, Lexi Smith back in. So Notre Dame back with the twin tower look with both Detweiler and Lexi Smith back on the court. Molly Hoover running the point. Starting five back out there for Notre Dame. Ava Hassel back in the game as well. She's got the ball right now. She'll pass it to Detweiler. High post. Ball loose momentarily, but Hoover tracks down. Beautiful pass to Smith. Can't down the bunny, but Detweiler is there to clean it up. And again, just too much size. Kind of turned lemonade from lemons right there (laughs) as that that play was uh, breaking down, but Detweiler bails them out. Detweiler has 17 in the game, and Notre Dame now up by 15, 39-24. Ava Hassel forcing the turnover, a backcourt violation, and you can credit the freshman defense for that as Bailey Justice was just unable to bring the basketball across the timeline. Hassel knocked it away from her by the time that Bailey Justice was able to track it down. Ten seconds had he laughs. Great defense by Ava Hassel. And we've seen that from some of our young boys players as well. Usually you're either good on the offensive end or the defensive end when you're that young. Another example here, Ava Hassel good on both ends of the floor. Here's Hoover with the ball, top of the key, passes to the aforementioned Hassel. Right wing, she goes cross court to Schmidt for three. Can't knock it down with the rebound for Peebles. Is Geraldine Toller, Geraldine Toller, excuse me. Makes that a long O. Here's Christian Reed with the ball, right wing. She'll pass cross court to Ryan. Ryan gives it off to J.C. Justice, who's guarded by Detweiler. Detweiler has about an eight-inch height advantage there. J.C. Justice gives it to Nichols, left baseline, quickly to Ryan, back over to J.C. Justice, left wing. She'll give it to McKinley Ryan. Ryan puts down her dribble, pitches it over to Toller. Toller gives it to Reed, right corner to McKinley Ryan. Three on the way. It's short. Lances off the front of the iron with the rebound for Notre Dame. Momentarily was Molly Hoover, but then she loses the handle. Here is a three put up by J.C. Justice. No good, and a foul on Peebles. Nichols over the back. I think that's five. That was a great job by Toller moments ago, taking that rebound away from Molly Hoover. Now that is her fifth foul. Madison Nichols out of the game. I think it may be... Emotion may be hitting her a little bit now being a senior. Yep, that's got to hurt a little bit, knowing that she exits the game at the 548 mark of the fourth quarter with her team trailing by 15, 39-24. She might have just logged her last few seconds of of play in her high school career. So Notre Dame with the basketball, going the length of the floor. End of the game for Peebles is Lily Gray, a freshman. Nice job as Notre Dame finds a wide open Lexi Smith on the right block, and she converts the layup. Really nice job passing there to break the pressure and get the easy layup. 11 points now for Lexi Smith as she becomes the second Lady Titan to reach double figures, joining Katie Detweiler, who leads all scorers with 17. It's 41-24 Notre Dame, 5.20 left to play. Could Notre Dame have a date with Waterford one week from tonight in a regional semifinal game here in Jackson? Looking like it. (laughs) Notre Dame is just a little over five minutes away from punching its ticket into the regional tournament. Nets to be cut down following this one for the district champ. Peebles is going to have to mount quite a comeback if the Lady Indians are going to get this one. Here's a missed 15-footer by J.C. Justice during the battle for the rebound. The ball is knocked out of play by Notre Dame. Possession remains with Peebles. Entering the contest for the Lady Indians, re-entering the game, I should say, is Bailey Justice, who has... Played a lot tonight. She has three points in the contest, having knocked down a three back in the second period. 
She replaces Christian Reed. J.C. Justice takes the inbounds pass on the right wing. Taylor Schmidt guards. Justice moves over to the top of the key. J.C. will pass over to Bailey. She'll give it off to Lily Gray, and whistles will sound. Play over. That is going to be foul number one on Molly Hoover. That's the 17th foul, however, on Notre Dame. So, Peebles will go into the bonus. We've got a timeout with 4.45 left to play. Notre Dame leads 41-24. We'll step away as well. This is Girls High School District Championship Basketball on Fox Sportsman, AM 1260 WNXT. Trent and Tony Niddle Service Center in Portsmouth offers complete mechanical work. So for repairs, tune-ups, and oil changes, bring your vehicle to Trent and Tony Niddle Service Center in Portsmouth. And Trent and Tony would like to thank all of their loyal customers for voting Trent and Tony Niddle Service Center the top mechanics in the area in the Portsmouth Daily Times Reader's Choice Awards. Visit Trent and Tony Niddle Service Center. They're located at 1012 Lincoln Street in Portsmouth. Phone 740-353-5823. 740-353-5823. Technological advancements in cancer care are available at the Scioti County Cancer Center in Portsmouth. Dr. Prakash Patel has over 25 years of cancer care experience, and he is responsible for bringing some of the newest cancer-fighting technology to the region. Dr. Patel and his staff at the Scioti County Cancer Center in Portsmouth also offer screenings, enabling for early detection. Advanced technology. at SciotaCountyCancerCenter.com. With 4.45 left to play in regulation, the Notre Dame Lady Titans lead people 41-24 at the free throw line for the Lady Indians as freshman Lily Gray shooting the one and one. She banked in the first one. Well, they all count, Chuck. That they that do. <laughs> like eight ball in the billiards parlor. I don't know if she called it, but she'll take it. Second free throw in the air, and this one off the back iron, no good. Lexi Smith with the rebound. So Lily Gray splits the pair to make it a 41-25 Notre Dame lead. Lady Titans by 16 as we come up on four and a half to play. Ava Hassel fires right side to Schmidt. Schmidt, high post. Nice high pass. It was, was it? To Lexi Smith, who will get the bucket, plus one. That's a pretty play right there. Nice drop step move on the cut there by Smith and right in stride. The bounce pass from Taylor Schmidt. The hoop and the harm and a three-point play opportunity. Schmidt with the assist. Smith with the points. And Smith goes to the line looking for one more after McKinley Ryan picked up her first foul of the game. That's the 16 foul on Peebles. Free throw in the air and off the back iron. No good, but Detweiler with the rebound. Notre Dame will reset. Boy, Detweiler is tough to contend with down in the low post. She really is. Smith again. Smith. She's pretty tough to contend with down <laughs> in the low post as well. That was essentially a four-point trip for Lexi Smith with a missed free throw in between a pair of two-point field goals. And Notre Dame has a 20-point lead, 45-25, four minutes to go. Turnover, Peebles. The ball goes back to the Lady Titans. Re-entering the contest for Notre Dame will be Allie Smith, the 5'2 senior. She will join Ava Hassel, Taylor Schmidt, Lexi Smith, and Katie Deckweiler on the floor right now for Notre Dame. Hassel brings the ball into the front court, passes to Schmidt, who's guarded by J.C. Justice. Schmidt drives into the lane, up and under, good. Didn't stop the ball, and Schmidt takes it all the way in. 47-25, Notre Dame by 22. The Lady Titans, I'm sure, are sensing this one now. Now they can smell it for sure. Notre Dame, Waterford, one week from tonight here at Jackson High School. It looks like it is going to be. Bailey Justice passes to McKinley Ryan, left side. She'll give the ball off to J.C. Justice. Her pass deflected by Ava Hassel, but McKinley Ryan tracks it down. She gives it back off to J.C. Justice. Far wing, drives to the free throw line, forces up a 14-footer, cannot hit. Lily Gray comes away with the rebound, and a good rebound that was <laughs> by the freshman post player. She kicks it out to fellow freshman, J.C. Justice, gives it off to Christian Reed around the perimeter. McKinley Ryan left side, she's guarded by Detweiler. Reed, top of the key, spots up for three, cannot hit. The air ball sells out of bounds. Possession goes back to Notre Dame with 2.50 left. Re-entering the contest for Peebles will be Geraldine. 
Kohler. You know, how active they are out front defensively, and then you got the two twin towers down below. It's really tough to get off good shots. When you get off good shots, you better make them, and I think they're just they're just wore out. I think Peoples is. Molly Hoover re-enters the game for Notre Dame. This Lady Titans defense, really, really good. All season long, but especially tonight, Notre Dame entered this contest surrendering just barely over 30 points per game, and it is yet to be determined whether or not Peebles will crack 30 tonight, and this is a pretty good Lady Indians ball club. You talk about, too, the, the 24-0. I mean, it's a great schedule, too. They had six wins over te- Division three or higher teams, so yep. it wasn't just like all Division four teams that they played, not that that would be a bad thing, but, again, yeah, they beat teams that were bigger than them as well as six times this year out of the 24 victories. Tonight marks the first opportunity that you and I have had to see the Notre Dame Lady Titans. We have heard a lot of chatter, and after watching this team play just this one game, it's easy to understand why. And this probably isn't their best performance. <laughs> Beautiful pass from Ava Hassel up the floor to Lexi Smith. Give her two more. She's got 17 in the game, equaling her with Katie Detweiler as the contest high scorer. 49-25 Notre Dame. We've got two and a half to play. J.C. Justice passes cross court to McKinley Ryan. She'll give it to Toller. Toller passes to Bailey Justice near side. She's guarded by Hassel. Bailey Justice left the center circle, moving over toward the far sideline. We'll give it off to McKinley Ryan. She finds J.C. Justice, who's guarded by Molly Hoover. Justice. Drives inside the three-point arc and a foul on Notre Dame. I mean, they're just not letting them breathe. No, no, they're no. giving no space at all. A little bit too much hands there by Hoover, but again, it's because she's right there. And, and, and Hassel before, and they're up by 24. Yeah, they are relentless, are the Notre Dame Lady Titans on defense. Hoover records the foul, her second, team eighth. Front end of the one and one by Justice is no good. Rebound, Ava Hassel. That is the first miss at the free throw line for J.C. Justice. She had been a perfect two for two prior to that. She went off for 10 of her 14 points in the third quarter, and she has not scored since. Notre Dame has done a really nice job here in the final period shutting her down. All right, get ready for the hockey line change here, Chuck. <laughs> Looks like a bus stop over there yep. at the uh, scorer's table. Foul on people stopping the clock with a minute 47. Coach J.D. McKenzie getting set to clear the bench. Tatum Airy picked up the foul. There go the starters. Here come the subs. The starting unit receiving a nice ovation, deservedly so. Absolutely. Notre Dame going to improve to 25 and 0 with this victory. They'll move on to a regional semifinal, but not before celebrating a district championship tonight. First free throw by Detweiler is good. Detweiler, the only member of the original starting five, still on the floor, as she is the shooter. Cassie Schaefer, a 5'6 sophomore, in the game. Isabel Casti, a 5'6 freshman. She has entered the contest, as has Chloe Delabar, a 5'9 freshman. And Claire Detweiler coming in here now as well, too. She is a 5'9 freshman. So everybody getting a chance to play. Joyce Zing, a 5'5 sophomore, also on the floor. Detweiler made her second free throw. Is her 19 in the game. It's 51 25 Notre Dame. Here is a bucket and one by Peebles. It is Tatum Airy, the sophomore, with her first two points of the game, and she'll go to the free throw line looking for one more. A minute 29 left. Notre Dame well on its way to claiming the win. Entering the contest now for the Lady Titans will be Ashley Holtgrew, a 5'6 freshman. Caitlin Willie and uh, Kylie Sims in for Peebles as well. Harry, free throw, rattles around, falls through. 51-28, Notre Dame quickly to the offensive end. The Lady Titans got it down low and then pulled it out. Notre Dame works it around to Cassidy, top of the key. She'll pass it over to Schaefer. Schaefer with the ball. She goes back to Isabel Cassidy. He drives, left wing, ball knocked loose, bodies hitting the floor, and Notre Dame commits the turnover. Possession goes back to Peebles. Chloe Delabar was in momentarily. Now she re-enters the game. Checking out is Claire Detweiler. 51-28 Lady Titans. 
some kind of facial injury. She's got a, a, a mask on, so to speak. Maybe a, I'm not sure broken nose or whatever, but here's a steal by Cassidy. She'll go coast to coast. Got it. And get that layup to go. Isabel Cassidy. 53-28. 50 seconds left in this one. Notre Dame fans, many of them already on their feet, urging their team on. Another near steal by the Lady Titans. Chloe Delabar just about had this one. She knocks the ball out of play. Claire Detweiler will re-enter the game. She'll replace Ashley Holtgrew. Checking in for Peebles will be Harley Wilkinson, a sophomore. Good to see both of these coaches mm-hmm. trying to get everybody in here in the waning moments. Hope, Hope Brown and also for Peebles. Caitlin Willie will toss the ball in for the Lady Indians. She gets the ball in play to Kylie Sims, the junior, who just entered the contest. Toller, high post, drives near the free throw line and pitches the ball back to Sims. Sims feeds it over to Willie. Willie penetrates toward the key, gives it off to Sims out top. She'll pass it right side to Toller. 15 seconds to go. Toller drives into the paint. She kicks it back out on the perimeter to Willie. Willie gives it off to Sims. Sims drives the right baseline, and she'll draw the foul. Chloe, Chloe Delabar, I think. Yep, I believe you are correct, and that will be the first on the 5'9 freshman. That's a move point now. We are down to only 8.4 ticks of the clock remaining before Notre Dame can officially celebrate this district title. Notre Dame and Waterford coming up. <laughs> that ought to be pretty good. Should be good. First free throw by Sims is good. Got one more coming her way. It's in the air, and it is in and out. No good. Rebound tapped into the hands of Peebles. It was Holt Brown who got that board. Here's a jumper by Willie. It will not go, and this one goes final. 53-29. The Notre Dame Lady Titans score a district title here tonight at Jackson High School as they best the Peebles Lady Indians, and it will be Notre Dame. Facing off against Waterford one week from tonight in a regional semifinal back here at Jackson. But first thing is first, let's let the Lady Titans and all their fans enjoy this one. Notre Dame plays on. They are now 25-0 while Peebles concludes its season at 17 Yeah, it has to feel very good for Notre Dame. J.D. McKenzie and the coaching staff there, they, they were at this point last year and got beat by five points to a very good Eastern Megs team. Uh, of course, they beat Eastern Megs. Uh, during the regular season, so it has to feel really, really good. They're going to get to cut the nets down here. Playing the Sweet 16. We'll wrap this one up when we return. We've got stats to relay to you as well as our player of the game and our cool play of the game. All that and more as the Men for Telephone, Men for TV postgame show is coming your way next. You've been listening to Girls District Tournament Basketball on Fox Sports with AM 1260 WNXT. Thursday, now that's a day. Thursday is awesome. Thursday is the bomb. Why is Thursday so awesome? Well, because it's boneless Thursdays at Buffalo Wild Wings. Every Thursday, you can get specially priced boneless wings spun fresh in your choice of any of their over 20 sauces and seasonings. So hurry up and get to your local Buffalo Wild Wings this Thursday. You'll know it's Thursday by how awesome it feels. Or you can just look at a calendar. Whatever works. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings. Sports. This broadcast is being presented by Gamps, John Deere, and Convenient Mart. Bob and Floyd's Tire Service. SOMC. Dyer Insurance. Gleam Firearms. Larry Moore Trophies and Sporting Goods. Sherman Cricker Insurance. Penn Station East Coast Subs. Clark's Pump and Shop. Luke's Supply. Hunter Williams Insurance. Gaddy's Pizza. Donnie Martin Heating and Air. Bus Mac Equipment Transport. As well as the Glockner Family of Dealerships. Trent and Tony Niddle Service Center in Portsmouth offers complete mechanical work. So for repairs, tune-ups, and oil changes, bring your vehicle to Trent and Tony Niddle Service Center in Portsmouth. And Trent and Tony would like to thank all of their loyal customers for voting Trent and Tony Niddle Service Center the top mechanics in the area in the Portsmouth Daily Times Reader's Choice Awards. Visit Trent and Tony Niddle Service Center. They're located at 1012 Lincoln Street in Portsmouth. Phone 740-353-5823. 740-353-5823. The latest the latest technological advancements in cancer care are available at the Scioti County Cancer Center in Portsmouth. 
Dr. Prakash Patel has over 25 years of cancer care experience, and he is responsible for bringing some of the newest cancer-fighting technology to the region. Dr. Patel and his staff at the Scioto County Cancer Center in Portsmouth also offer screenings, enabling for early detection. Advanced technology, personal touch. Online at SciotoCountyCancerCenter.com. Welcome to the Medford Telephone Medford TV Post Game Show, coming to you from Jackson High School, where the Notre Dame Lady Titans have just defeated Peebles 53 to 29 in this Girls Division IV District Championship game. I'm Chuck Greenslade, along with Mark Williams and Dennis DeCamp, who is working diligently on our stats. Big win for Notre Dame tonight. Congratulations to the Lady Titans. They are now 25 and 0 district champs. They will play Waterford in a regional semifinal game one week from tonight back here at Jackson High School. This was the second game of our Division IV district championship twin bill tonight. In the first contest, it was Waterford defeating New Boston 55-22. to And again, congrats to New Boston on a stellar season. We do have a couple of boys Division II district semifinal games to pass along the results of. The contests were played at the Convo in Athens. Fairland was a winner over Benton County, and Fairfield Union defeated the Gallia Academy 49-46. to In women's college basketball earlier today, Shawnee State University was a winner over Life University 111-49, to an impressive performance by Coach Jeff Nichols, SSU Bears, in the opening round of the Mid-South Conference Tournament being held at the University of Pikeville in Pikeville, Kentucky. The SSU women will next play on Saturday. The SSU men will begin Mid-South Conference Tournament action tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. against the host school, u Pike. Best of luck to the Bears, both the men and the women's team. Let's take a look at the individual scoring first for the triumphant Notre Dame Lady Titans. Taylor Schmidt had five. Allie Smith recorded two. Isabel Cassidy had two points. Ava Hassel, the freshman, finished with eight. Lexi Smith had 17. And Katie Detweiler led all scorers with 19. For the Peebles Lady Indians, freshman J.C. Justice led the way with 14 points. McKinley Ryan had seven. Bailey Justice scored three, as did Tatum Airy. Both Lily Gray and Kylie Sims each made a free throw. Notre Dame had a great start as the Lady Titans jumped out to a big lead. Notre Dame would lead 16-4 at the end of the first. Both teams would play even in the second period with each scoring 10 points. It was 26-14 Notre Dame at the break. In the third quarter, the score remained pretty close as Notre Dame outscored Peebles 11-10 to take a 37-24 advantage into the fourth and final period. But in that final eight-minute stanza, Notre Dame managed to put this one away outscoring the Lady Indians 16-5 in the fourth quarter to win again by the final of 53-29. Let's now take a look at the team stats from this contest, which are a service of Nancy Hawk at the Real Estate Gallery with locations in both Wietersburg and Portsmouth. For all your real estate needs, contact Nancy Hawk at the Real Estate Gallery at 574-9902 or visit online anytime at realestategallery.com. Com. Mark, let's dive into those digits. All right, the shooting numbers tonight, very, very good shooting numbers for Notre Dame. 21 of 35 for the game, 60%. Didn't really get it done from long range, however. Only made one of eight for 13%. 33% shooting for Peebles. They were eight of 24. Also 33% from long range, shooting four of 12. Free throw line, 10 of 13 for Notre Dame, 77%. Eight of 13 for Peebles tonight for 60 now we're going to get into some numbers here that you're going to understand why the score ended up the way that it did. Notre Dame out-rebounding Peebles 21-11, to 8-4 to on the offensive end. Turnovers, where it was close in the first half, 16 turnovers for the game for Peebles, and I know that's going to be brought to you by our good buddy who helped us out a whole lot tonight, Dan Cassidy. And the uh, Baron Murphy Insurance Agency with our turnover report here. 16 for Peebles, 8 for Notre Dame, but the impressive stat, 1 in the second half wow. for Notre Dame. Assists, 12 for Notre Dame, 6 
for people. So rebounding, turnovers, assists, huge in this game tonight. Again, you mentioned Dan Casty. Without his efforts, we could not have made this broadcast happen tonight on Fox Sports with AM 1260. Thank you to Dan Casty at the Barrett Murphy Insurance Agency, as well as to the Detweilers at your local Subway restaurants, the Glockner family of dealerships, and Sherman Cricker Insurance. You mentioned that turnover report, Mark. It's always a service of the Barrett Murphy Insurance Agency at 1031 Gallia Street in Portsmouth. Isn't it time you turned your insurance needs over to Barrett Murphy? Call Dan Casty at 353 353- 3-1-2-1, again, twice as many turnovers for Feebles as for Notre Dame. It's now time to take a look at our upcoming broadcast schedule. It's the Glockner family of dealerships, glance toward the future. We know that you sometimes can't make it out to the game, but just as Glockner makes the car buying process easy, the WNXT and WZZZ sports teams makes listening to high school sports easy. When buying a vehicle is in your future, visit the Glockner family of dealerships, which include the Glockner GM Superstore in Portsmouth, Glockner Honda Toyota in Portsmouth, Glockner Chevrolet GMC in Buick in Ireton, Glockner Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram in Ashland, Glockner Ford of South Point, and Glockner Auto Credit with five locations throughout the tri-state area to best serve you. Visit online at glockner.com. No basketball tomorrow involving local teams, but we will get busy on Saturday and stay busy through Sunday. Saturday, the Mintford girls will take on Southeastern Ross from the Waverly Downtown Arena in a Division III district championship game. You'll be able to hear that contest on Fox Sportsman's AM 1260 as well as on WNXT Sports using the TuneIn Radio app on your smartphone. Pre-game coverage will get underway Right around 11.40, the tip-off between the Menford girls and Southeastern Ross is scheduled for noon. Best of luck to Coach Scott Cottle and his Lady Falcons. Saturday afternoon, a little later in the day, the Wheatersburg Pirates boys basketball team will face Lynchburg Clay from the Convo in a Division Three district semifinal. Coverage on the breeze will begin at 4.25. On Sunday, the hometown broadcasting company of Portsmouth will return to the Convocation Center in Athens to bring you a pair of boys' Division IV district semifinal games. The first that we will be airing can be heard on Mix 99.3 as the South Webster Jeeps take on the new Boston Glenwood Tigers. The pregame will fire up at 325. And right after that contest, you will be able to listen as Coach Dirk Holler's Green Bobcats take on Gloucester Trimble. That, too, is a boys' Division IV district semifinal game at the Convo. You'll be able to hear it Sunday on Classic Rock 107.5 The Breeze with coverage getting underway at 510. That is your Glockner family of dealerships glance toward the future. As always, we remind you to begin your Saturday morning by tuning in to the Saturday morning sports line starting at 9 o'clock on Fox Sportsman's AM 1260 as well as on WNXT Sports using the TuneIn Radio app on your smartphone. And for more local sports information, check us out on Facebook at Fox Sports 1260-Portsmouth. We've got Shawnee State University basketball to talk more about as the weekend progresses as the Mid-South Conference Tournament got underway for the women earlier today. It gets underway for the men tomorrow. And the Big Ten men's tournament and women's tournament, for that matter, started yesterday. That continued today. Both the Ohio State men and women will play tomorrow in the Big Ten Conference tournaments. We'll talk more about that as the weekend progresses as well. We remind you that our final scores from tonight's Girls Division IV District Final Doubleheader in the first game, it was Waterford defeating New Boston. And in the Twilighter, the Notre Dame Lady Titans topped Peebles 53-29. to Mark, your final thoughts on this great evening. Well, I think, uh, again, going back to the New Boston game, it was a situation. A, a coach told me this one time. I played, or I didn't play, but I was involved with Piketon's team in, in high school. We played a team called Graysville Skyview over at the Convocation Center, and this was when it was at the regionals. You had to get to the regionals before you went to the Convocation Center. Graysville Skyview had been there three years in a row and he said you know what we were happy to be there we but they were a little overwhelmed i think because he said graysville skyview knew where the gum was underneath the seats having <laughs> been there so much waterford had been there the experience was there they knew how to, how to win uh, new boston this was a new thing for them not to take anything away from their season 
or, or their effort, uh, but Waterford, uh, outstanding team. And I think we saw Notre Dame not necessarily on their best night. I think, again, the turnover numbers, I think, in, at least in the first half, were probably too high for J.D. He probably likes that one in, in the second half. But uh, it didn't shoot particularly well from long range. But you got Detweiler, you got Smith inside. They controlled things. The guards out top pressured their guards all night long. I think it's just going to be a whale of a matchup coming up next Thursday, Waterford and uh, Notre Dame. And, and I got a feeling that uh, this, this place will be packed next Thursday. Hopefully we can be here and be a part of it as well. Yep, absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. As for the new Boston-Waterford game, sometimes David beats Goliath, but sometimes David just shows a lot of guts to even fight Goliath. And as far as the Lady Titans, they are everything as advertised. A very good ball club. They've got the post presence. They've got the guards. And I think their post players got up and down the floor really, really good. When you have some big players height-wise who can run, then you've got quite an asset. And Notre Dame has a couple of them and Katie Detweiler and Lexi Smith to go along with those quick-handed guards. So, yeah, you're right. That matchup next Thursday here in Jackson between Notre Dame and Waterford, that has all the makings of what could be a dandy. We wish the Notre Dame Lady Titans the very best as they continue on, and congratulations to the new Boston Lady Tigers on a great season, which unfortunately came to an end tonight. That is going to do it for us. Blake Hatney was our studio engineer this evening, doing a wonderful job back at Studio Control. Thanks to Dennis DeCamp, who tagged along to help us out with stats tonight, and thanks to Mark Williams for his efforts throughout the evening as well. Until next time, I'm Chuck Greenslate. Good night, everybody. The preceding was a special sports presentation of 1260 WNXT. We now rejoin our regularly scheduled programming already in progress. Last play, no. Right. Some guys throw Hail Marys twice. I want to keep that play alive. I enjoy that play. You know who the greatest check down Charlie of all time was? Oh, this is good. Who yeah. is that? The greatest check down Charlie of all time. He's now in the Hall of Fame. They put him in the Hall of Fame posthumously. Kenny Stabler. Kenny Stabler was a check down Charlie. That was the that was the argument John Madden used to have with Al Davis. Al Davis liked the Mad Bombers, and the guys who who went deep. And but and John Madden was saying, but this guy's so accurate, he'll just keep moving the ball down the field. And so he Al Davis it, yeah. went with the requests of John Madden. And then now uh, you know now we've got a Hall of Famer. Too bad his grandchildren had to be up there instead of him. Oh, yeah. oh, Nick Foles, MVP of Super Bowl 52. He'll go right back to assuming his normal role, back up to Carson Wentz. But Carson Wentz has had that torn ACL. It could be 12 to 14 months of rehab. Will we see Nick Foles in an Eagles uniform week one? Yeah, I believe we will. I think that would be the smart thing. It doesn't look like Wentz is going to be ready. He's not going to be ready at 100%. We know that, and Foles can play well. And it's going to be tough to see Foles win the Super Bowl, maybe play in the first two games and win, and then all of a sudden you tell him to get to the bench because oh. Wentz is ready to go. Yeah, you know, and uh, you know, some, it might, even for morale of the team, Ray Lewis was saying when the Ravens won the Super Bowl with Trent Dilfer, and the Ravens got rid of Trent, D- Trent Dilfer, that really upset everybody on the team. And then they had some terrible quarterbacks and, and had a bad season. The next season. Oh, it's been 20 months since Andrew Luck's surgery. The type of surgery he had usually takes about 15 months to heal. It's been 20. He's currently in L- L.A. rehabbing and uh, working with Frank Reich to check every box. So uh, can we get to see Andrew Luck on the field yes. in week one? He'll, he'll, he's ready to go. He's 100%. He still hasn't he's thrown a 100%. He hasn't fine. thrown a, my, injury. My moles in the foxholes have told me he hasn't thrown a ball yet. Yeah. His job February, is to throw a 